I'm on the three chapters. I'm on the three program Zoom. No, he's on. It's good. All right. You, so we are starting Chavre Hilcha Shabbos. Pedic, right? The program three, three chapters is Chof Aleph, Chof Beis, Chof Gimel. We are starting with Pedic Chof Aleph. Pedic Chof Aleph is going to introduce the, the Rabbanons of Hilcha Shabbos, beginning with Halacha Aleph, says the Rambam. Nemar Batreira. The Torah uses the word Tishboys. Now understand and appreciate that the word Tishboys is actually written both in Parshas Mishpatim and it's written in Parshas Kisisa. Tishboys means a person should cease from doing activity or in the positive, rest, which means this word means says that even activities that are not a malacha, not in the category of avos, not even in the category of their derivatives of tuldois. Nevertheless, chayiv lishbois mehem. There are activities in which you are obligated to rest from. Now, what does Hashem mean when He says rest? He does not specify. So these udvarim harbe hein shu chachamim mishum shvus. So that's why we explained in a few words of intro. So either the word tishbois is going to be a pure asmachta as it is, or there's going to be from the following uh, obligations of resting, it's going to be, on one hand, it's called the Rabbanans, but the Rabbanans simply defined what Hashem means when he says, which, tishbois, which means that there are going to be many levels of shvus in the Rabbanan. It's not, it's asr the Rabbanan. Some of them are more closer to Adoyed Isa or under the umbrella of Adoyed Isa. Some of them are purely the Rabbanan. Now, from everything we're going to learn, not only in Pedic Chof Aleph, what the Rambam is writing now is going to everything we're learning today. Chof Aleph, Chof Beis, Chof Gimel. It's going to be in one of the following two categories, and that's important to state because there are other Derabanans that are going to be, uh, uh, that the Rambam was Masadarit in the subsequent Perakim, Pedic Chof Dalit, etc., which are not in these categories. But what are we learning right now? Either Mehem Devarim Asurim Apneshim Doimim Limalacham, activities that look like a Malacham, not because if you'll do this, you might do a malacha. Dafka not. Dafka love. The fact that they are doimen lamalacha, that's why the Chachamim says don't do that. And also, it's either or, umehen, devarim, asurim, gzeira, shem, yovim, which is what we are most familiar with, bachlal, when it comes to the abanans that are in the category of a siyog. God says don't do A. So the Chachamim say, yes, yeah, since you can't do A, we are saying better for you not to do B. Not better. Don't do B for you not to do A. So it's either or. And the Eloheim, and the Eloheim, again, the Eloheim is not only an intro to Pedi Chof Aleph. This is Taka, the Eloheim of Chof Aleph, Chof Beis, and Chof Yim. Halacha Beis. First thing that Amman picks is like this. We learned above Kalamash Vuguma is a person who levels crevices in the ground, in the ground outdoors. And therefore, Usserli, Panis, this day, Hanira B'Shavos, a person is not allowed to relieve oneself, defecate oneself in a plowed field, just to make it clear that a Sedein Nira was a field that was only plowed over one time before, you, and, and what happened there was these fields had many gumais when you only plow it once, then you would plow it again. And when a person would walk there, it would bother you. There's so, there so many crevices in the field. Maybe you're going to go level it out. Shema Yashve gumais, right? That's don't even defecate in the field because you might end up fixing the field. And that will be also me Or another example. If you're clearing out a storage room, which may not always be done. But if there's a tzoyrach, as the Rabbim is going to write, yeah, then yes, you may do it. What will allow you to schlep boxes clearing out a storage room? Either because, no, it's both because you need a dvar mitzvah. For example, you have guests and the guests are not going to fit in your home, so you have to move the location into your storage room, and that's why you're clearing it out. Or people are gathered to learn, and more people than expected showed up, so you have to use this larger room, which was previously used as a storage room, so you are, in these two cases, allowed to clear it out, but you may not fully clear it out. Fully clearing it out means don't go from the ceiling until the floor, because if you're going to take off the final layer of stuff that is on the floor, you're going to see the state of your floor, and Maybe you're going to be mashva gumais. Another example: Teach al gabi aragli. If there is mud that got stuck on your on your feet, not on your shoes, but on your feet, you are allowed to clean it off by smearing it on the wall or on the beam. But you may not smear it on the ground. Why? In 
Another example. Well, Yorik Bakarka, you may not, after spitting on the ground, wipe. Shmir was speaking about an earthen ground that, um, that with your feet in the ground. However, walking on it is permitted. Women that play with nuts and almonds, it's basically they, they go bowling with it. Man, God, men are learning about that. the women, they're playing with nuts, or the men that are playing with nuts. You see, speaking about the women that he knew versus the men that he knew. So, what's the issue when, you, when, you, when you're playing with these nuts games on the ground? What you need, that's Mamish the expression. We got to level the playing field that comes from this halach. You're trying to do bowling, there might be a little bump. Why? But also another thing. But also, if you have a earth floor, you may not sweep it. But if the floor is paved with stone, as we have today, then there is no such an issue. And guys, it doesn't only mean stone; it also means wooden beams or today's um, fake plastic PVCs that we have over here, whatever you call them. Then there's no issue. People would throw water. They would sprinkle water on the earthen floors to keep the dust down. That is allowed to be done. And for that, we don't say, even if that act in itself will somehow level the floor, even if we already learned in Pedic Aleph that I'm on Paskins, when it comes to Dabr Sha'in Meschavin, Halachi Kirab Shimon, and there is no Psikanesha here. So we're not, we're, we're not afraid that this in itself is not in violation and it's not going to lead you to the Mashvagums. Next, you may not apply oil to the floor, even if it's paved, wow, with stones. You may not blow the dust off the floor, you may not wash it. Why? See, guys, that's the second category. Not because you're going to be Yashvagumais. Guys, you can't be Yashvagumais if it's stone. So why can't you do it? This other type of shoes, because it's doy melamalachem. Shulayasik ederach shuai sevachayim. Oh, I'm taking back because you shouldn't do it that way. I'm sorry, you shouldn't do things that look like the weak. And then the yavi lahashu sagum is mishvan shuai sekein. The makom sheino ratzu. Very good. But by the way, they did not make that gazeta when it comes to sweeping. So sweeping, maybe you don't understand for. If you if you're doing more than sweeping, you're rinsing. Then you might end up doing it. When you don't have a stone floor, if you have a courtyard that became soiled in the rainy season and you want to put something on the muddy ground, maybe to have an um and you are allowed to bring straw and spread it over that floor. I want you to know that um, we're speaking about items that are edible to animals and you don't plan to leave it there. That's going to be key as we learned in the Gemara because then you're making the floor. Here, you're not, you're not going to leave it there permanently. And when you spread it on the floor, don't spread it out as you normally do by using the basket proper, but use it with the underside of the container or the sides of the container. Why? Don't do it the way you do it. And then you might end up being mashrugumis. If you're watering seeds. So we learned that watering seeds is you may not draw water using water that's out there in the field, using a proper uh, wheel, which draws up a lot of water, because once you'll have all that water, I want you to know, but using the small little galgalin that only brought up water for you to drink, absolutely no problem. Just you can't do something that's going to bring up a lot of water, then you might end up using that water. Then, because all of those wells that were in the huts that had small wheels and the water that was drawn was smaller amounts only needed to use in the house. And we, of course, you can bring up water. There's no issue of transferring, as we learned yesterday, for you to use in your house. We don't want you to be out there with a large amount of water, which people then just habitually, you don't waste water, they would use it to water the field. Allah has said, if a person detaches produce, that's Weeping, right? You may not remove the honey from the honey hive, from the beehive, because that's toilish. By the way, wow. In other words, it's not mephatic, but it's toilish. Now, you may not climb up a tree, whether the tree is moist, whether the tree is dry. You may not suspend articles from a tree. You may not even lean on the tree. Right, and furthermore, you may not even go up there prior to Shabbos in order to stay there the whole Shabbos. 
may not be using directly a tree on Shabbos. Why? Again, all of these things, that's in the category so far because you might end up detaching produce or you might end up detaching a branch. Halacha 7. Peter Shinashur of Shabbos, fruits that fall by themselves off a tree from Shabbos, rabbinically, also the Achlan Amatsu Shabbos, Gezeda Shemi Yitlish, right? Mevim Lede Melach. Hadas Mechuber, if you have a myrtle that's still connected to the ground and you want to smell from it, here Chazal did not make a Gezeda that if they would allow you to smell from it, you might detach it. You won't do that. Sheein Hani Hana Asa, Elul Lede Yachboi, Hadei Rechai Matsu, you don't need to detach it to smell. However, when it comes to eating esreg or tapuach and any other fruit that's on the tree, you may not smell it while it's attached. Why not? Because you might end up eating it. Based on what we learned in Allah Chavav, that you may not be mishtamash be'ilan if there's a tree that has roots that are protruding above the ground, so you're not allowed to sit on them if they go three tfachim or higher from the ground. But if they are within the three tfachim, since of love, it's ka'aretz, you can sit on it. Now, nuance. If some of the root is above three, some of it is under three, then muter lishtamash bahem in the location that she'en gavaya shloisha. If all, if some of the branch, some side of the branch is above three, even if the other side of the branch is lower to the ground, then you can't use that, even though you're sitting on that side of the branch. Or, you know, depend, how do you say taller than the ground? If you measure the ground, it's with it's within three tefachim. But really, the ground over there goes in a little bit, or some area, and since it goes down, so under the branch until the ground underneath it, there is the three tefachim. In both of these cases, we are machmer and osur leishav aleim. Halacha nine: Ain rechem lagavavim v'shabbos. You may not ride an animal on Shabbos because edesham yachtur chesamayr lahanita. You might break off a branch for you to have a whip to drive the animal better. The ain nitlin babehim, and therefore you may not um, lean on the animal. Below yala mibo oydiyom, you may not even go up on the animal prior to Shabbos to sit on it on Shabbos. You may not even lean on the sides of the animal, but see they tzedadim, see they tzedadim. Halskap chevre is both on the tree and on the animal is permitted. I'll give you an example of Tzidit Tzidadim ha- hanging a hammock. So if the hammock is around the branch, so it's on the branch, you may not go on the hammock on Shabbos. That's called Tzidit Kilan, Shtam Shuzbilan. But if there is a hook coming out of the branch and the hammock is on the hook, or if you have a rope with the hook and the hammock is on that, so the hammock is on the side of the side of the tree, that's Mutter. Allah be ilan the Shabbos. If you went up on the tree on Shabbos, so it depends. If you went up the shaygig, then you were allowed to go down. If you went up knowing you're not allowed to go up, us or later, you're penalized. It's better than the penalty of holding the items. Remember, that's better, but still you have to stay on the tree for the rest of Shabbos. And on an animal, we don't say that if you went on the animal, the mazid, you have to stay on there on Shabbos because we're not going to punish you often cheshben to bring the animal tzar balachayim. So therefore, you have to get off the animal. And furthermore, you always should take off the loads of an animal on Shabbos because of Tzar Balachayim. What's the Chiddush? You'll see in a moment. Even in scenarios where without Tzar Balachayim, you would not be allowed to remove things off the animal case. If your animal is holding this big peck of, of grain, now here will be, okay, I think this is the example, not, not I think. This is a case where there is an iser that's called doim al Not it's going to make you do a malacha. Taking a load of the animal is not going to bring you to do a malacha. This is called uvda dechal. Removing a big peckle off of the back of an animal is taking mundane activities. You're transporting schayda, you're schlepping schayda, but sabalachaim. So don't remove it with your hands, make a shinui. You know, put your shoulders under the peckle and somehow remove it. Now, all of this is going to mean that what, that which will be removed won't be taken off the animal gently if you're not doing it kedarkai. So that's what happens if you have utensils that have breakable materials. So things that are not mutsi, you can remove. You can remove it because you are now in a private domain. However, but if the items on the animal are mutsa to begin with, as we're going to learn in the later prakim, then, then even though you may not touch muksa directly, but you can untie the strings and those pekalach fall off by themselves. Now let's go further. What happens if you have breakable items? So if there are sakim ketanim, which means that if you bring thick pillows 
and the cushions and you put it underneath it. The items are not that heavy that if they will fall on these uh, pillows, they won't break. And that's the solution. Now there's another issue. The other issue is, is that you are creating, you're creating muksa Because when something muksa is on a pillow and now it's a base for muksa so you can't move it. And there's an issue called, you're not allowed to be mevatel keli mehechani as we'll learn God willing tomorrow. So it doesn't matter. You're not doing that. Because even after those um, muksa small items are on the pillows, you can take the pillows away. Nothing is going to happen. You, since it's possible to remove the pillows away without touching the muksa, you know, you go underneath it, you just slap it up, and therefore you're not being mavata la keli, and we're going to learn that, that's going to be teirik chafei. But if the, if the animal is loaded with big bricks, Big shtiklach of glass. Guys, these are pieces of glass that were not cut for something specific, which means the owner won't lose money if they break. For some reason, you need these blocks of grass. If it's one piece or two pieces or three pieces, it doesn't make a difference. So then, okay, it's taka muksa, but there's no problem. Undo the, the ropes, let these sack and fall by themselves. And even if it's going to break, it doesn't create a big hazard because everything anyways is going to be melted down. That's the case where this person has it to melt down the glass. But we're getting to this point. If the sacks were large and they were filled with beautiful uh, glassware. Now, here are just many issues. Let, let's just go with the issue that if this came from beyond the tchum, then you're not allowed to move it. Let's go with that. So first of all, it's already in the Rosh Hashayach. How are you going to remove it? You can't do it. Because we said there's a concept of doimen l'malachu uvda d'choyl. What's the counter value? What's the solution? To leave it on the animal? Or to put it down in a way where it might break? Here they allowed you to put it down. However, in other words, whatever, make one thing, make sure the value of not causing pain to living creatures trumps all else. Let's try to make a shinoi. If you can't make a shinoi, or if by making a shino, you're going to have another issue, which is going to be, you're going to knock it on a big pillow, and then you won't be able to remove it. You're going to be in a bottle of then remove it directly. Halacha yud alif, ha medabek peidois, pressing through together, causing them to become one gush, one gulf, that Amam holds, yechaif mishuma amer. And by the way, that Amam stands alone over here. We spoke this in the sugyas. There are many shikas that hold that ein ma'amer ela b'makim giduloi. That Amam doesn't subscribe to that. Is when you gather produce to a certain degree, not putting it in a basket, but when you squeeze them together, that's called gathering throats. And I, so therefore, if your paytas were spread out in the yard, says that Ambam, you could pick up one by one and eat it. Like, for example, remember this, I remember from the Gemara, Toysu says you can gather them together. It fell in your huts and it didn't grow there. It's not Bermakim Gedule. That Ambam holds no. Even though it's not Bermakim Gedule, if you were to press them together, you'll be Bermakim Gedule, Amer, so Midr Abbanan, don't do something that might make you press it together. Don't even put it in a basket. You might press them together with one's hands while they are in that container, and that's called Imur. You cannot collect salt, making them into a block of salt, because that's nira kema'amir. Guys, nira kema'amir means because even la ramba, ma'amir is only something that grows from the ground. Melok doesn't grow from the ground. Here, you're not, it's not going to be mevim la day This is an isur in the category number one. It's doi melok It looks like you're being ma'amir. Allah yud beis. Mefarek. Mefarek is when you extract one item from the other. So we learned that amam holds, that's chayv nishum dosh. And therefore, guys, we already had this above. If you squeeze a some which are pro, which 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 are products that were made to be squeezed, which means the liquids have a den of a mashkin, guys, oichel may oichel is not mephotic, right? It's oichel from soilus, like by grains from the shaft. Liquid from oichel is mephotic. mephotic. Now let's go to rabbinic, and we already mentioned it when we learned it originally that when it comes to tusim and emoinim. These are fruits that some people would squeeze for their juices. Chachamim says you may not do it. Why? Why can you not squeeze the Rimoinim? Because if you'll be allowed to do that, 
Abel, however, Sha'ar Pedis, other fruits. That's Shita Sarambam, Bisman Harambam, like Parishin, like quinces, like Tapucham, like apples. And as Rurim is a certain type of apples, Mutal Lusachtam Bishabis, the Pleisha Enum Bene Shita. And by the way, this is one of the halachas, which Pasha, the times changed, and therefore the halacha changed as well. Halacha Yud Gimel, Kavashim, pickled, pickled uh, 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 products, which are filled with juice because they were pickled. And ushalakas, foods that were sitting on the fire for a very long amount of time. That means they're filled with juices. Shesachatam, if you did squeeze them, so like a skim ledakech bufam, if you intended to soften the produce itself, muter. However, im lohitzies memeim, if you wanted to remove the liquid, then it's asur midrabanam. Right? It's doima to what malacha? Mefarek. The ain meraskin as a shalik of you may not crush snow and really also ice in order to create liquid. But if you put it inside a cup or inside a plate, the Ramam doesn't differentiate, the Ramam writes it's permitted. However, just to know in Shulchan Aruch, we say that you have to put it inside another liquid. So when you take ice and you, if you don't put it in another liquid, it's doyme like your boinam or like you're creating something new. Okay, halach vaita, hashum. Uh, garlic, unripe grapes, un- unripe grain, that if they were crushed prior to Shabbos, guys, why were they crushed prior to Shabbos? Because these products have a certain oil. You want to extract their oil. So the main avoid which extracts the oil was already done. They were already crushed. If they have to be crushed a little bit more, then you can't even crush them a little bit. But if they don't need to be crushed at all, yes, they do have to be somehow ground by the hand or, you know, manipulated with the hand. And yet that you're doing right when you're getting the actual oil. That's okay. Uh, kernels of grain that are inside the pot and it's fully cooked. It's like a certain type of hot cereals. So if you're going to finalize it, after you take them off the file, you know, even today when you make hot cereal, if you let it sit, what happens? You have to mix it. So the final mix is not a problem. <laughs> removing grain from the husks. What's the issue? <laughs> do a shinoi, do it unusual. It should not look like your dash. Now, hold on. Why, 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 why isn't this actually a problem? Because since you're doing it biyad, below bikeli, it's already not called dosh. In other words, then it looks like dosh. And therefore, doing it with the shinoi, not just biyad, is being a completely motive. Another thing, if a person is suckling milk with his mouth, potter im goyneyach. If the person, uh, I'm sorry, it is potter, which means it's potter al asr. What are you doing? You're mafarik, right? You're removing liquid. However, the imayu goyneyach, people understood that if they are with a certain illness in which they're groaning from pain, then suckling milk direct is going to be a refuah. Then he, linik bifid. Ah, you're mafarik. Okay, so doing it with your mouth, a human being suckling milk is mafarik, is kalach yad. The Kalayacha means it should be Asr Medar Abanan. And as we keep on learning, whether it's Mishum, uh, you know, when there's a Hezek Darabim, here there's Tsar, or Mishum Tsar, like Gazru. And even if a person is not, yeah, it's, from the cow. it's a remedy, uh, I don't know from where, from whichever one. Correct. It doesn't make a difference then. From animal, from you, yes, from the source. Halacha Tezvav. What happens if fruits, had liquid flow or ooze out of them by themselves on Shabbos. So if it's coming from Zeisem and Anavim, also Lishtais Oisan HaMashkin Al Matzoi Shabbos, Shema Gzeda Shema Yizchav and Mishchad Oisan B'Shabbos, and that is a biblical violation. Which to begin with, even if you were to squeeze them, you're only violating a Dirabbanon. If those fruits that you picked here, you gathered because you want to eat them, which means you don't want the, for it to lose liquid. Even though normally, I mean, we died rice, only Zesim and Anavim. But the Ramam did acknowledge that in his times already, Tusim and Imlainim were by some people used for their juices. If you were one of those people, 
then the same thing applies that even though you did not squeeze it, the liquid squeezed that on their own. Nevertheless, you may not derive benefit from it until Matzah Shabbos. Allah Chazayin Zeisim Banovim Shadis Kamei Erev Shabbos. If they were crushed on Erev Shabbos, and you know, it, not they oozed out nothing, you actually crushed them. And now the Yatsum Mashkema Atzmam. That's already Mutarim. Has even Zeisim and Anovim. The Chen Chalais Devash Honeycombs that were crushed from before Shabbos. The, the honey, the Mashkem that goes from the Shabbos Mutarim because Shein Kan Mokem Ligzeda because Shkvadis Kamei Ba'Erev. Uh, you, squeezing a lemon onto food. So we already learned that above. That's not a problem. Allah, you, even though nowadays people make lemon juice, it's like too so many mining. But but that that's so midraban and it's mashkin. But again, the farik as we said is mashkin meyoichlin, not oichel meyoichel. And a juice that goes straight into food is called oichel and oichel meyoichel. How can you eat? You're my farik. You're not. It's oichel meoichel. Allah you zayin zoyder ubaidem winnowing, which is when they would throw the shaft that was already crushed in the ear, so the light wind will only blow away the lighter parts, which is the garbage, and the better parts, the grain, will fall back, will fall back down. And then the subsequent actual selecting, removing the husks with your fingertips. And people used to nash on these grains, right? So that's something that's that, that, that's not included, not in Zoyed and not but then when you blow ear over them to make sure that the clippers fall out, in other words, remove, separating them, you can do it with your hand. But you want to get rid of the shaft so that Amam says, if you want to get it off, use one hand. That's a very unusual way. Don't use a conan or a tamchay. Don't use a tray or a pot, which makes a better fan, which moves off the shaft easier because and that's going to be awesome. That's that's mamasha using a keli that's normally used for that. And you're chayv mishum boyed. Hamasham mishum adam. If you're filtering dregs, filtering dregs is told as boyed, or also a a, a tolda of merake of sifting. We learned above that if the wine is already uh, uh, potable, to further sift it or mayim tzululim, they they may be done in a keli that's not normally used for sifting, which is this Egyptian basket, but don't make it look like a sifter. Don't make you know that smiley face. Don't 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 give it that that um, belly, because then it's going to look too much like a keli. And if here another thing, don't hang a filter. Now, guys, hanging a filter does not mean don't hang it on the wall in your kitchen. That's not what the Rama means. He means that when you put a filter over a keli, he says don't hang. Um, don't hang the filter the way you would normally hang the filters that you're using to do a malach of real abidur. So it should be placed on the keli in an unusual way. We learned that causing milk to curdle, we learned to style the bider because what you're causing is you're causing the, the, the liquid to separate from the whey. You are a lot of plate sesame seeds and nuts and to honey. What do you want to do right now? So there's two ways of understanding what the Ramam says. Either lo yechabetz piyodi means the way he said it in English. He says don't mix them together. But not mixing them together is not an act of voided. So others understand what the Ramam is saying is that don't, um, w- when you want to remove them, don't remove them from the honey with your hand. Because removing now this uh, nut from the honey can lead you to bite it. It's not so simple because we learned that when it comes to moving the oichel from the psoilus, biyad, la'alter, is muted. But there's some sort of activity which is not, in the, does not fit the ayah. Or the way he says in English, it means, if I care, don't, mix them into a, don't make them into a block. But even though, guys, making things into a block is really a tulda of boina, if you remember. Like by gvina. Okay. Halo chalu yudches. Hamachate chasigerek dag dag kedele when you cut a vegetable into very small pieces, that's a tool of grinding and you're chayyot. You're not allowed to shred straw or carbs to feed the animals. Now, why isn't it actually toichen? I'll tell you why. Because since the animals can eat it without you grinding it, 
That's why it's not toichin, but it's called nido ketoichin. Avol mechatchin esad aluyin. You are a lot of cut boards. Let's niyah behema or nevela. Let's niyah klavim. Why she ain't chino ba pedos? Since it can be eaten the way it is immediately in Gansen, so you're doing. It's called a non-act. When would you? Before you're making it easier for them to eat. Here, like I'll give you an example. When you're eating, when you can't cut up your food, when you can eat it, you're, you're eating. Huh? To cook them, it says cook them. What? Cut them, cut them. It says here, a person who cuts vegetables in small pieces in order to cook them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When yeah, is yeah, he yeah. cooking them? When is no, he cooking, cooking them? them. He's just describing how it's done when people would cook them. You're talking about before. The opening line, the when it cuts vegetables in small pieces. Is it that kind of cooking or is it that way you When you're, when you're, make, when you're making it edible. Okay, halach yudches. When you're doing an act, which is to make that edible, even if you have to do another step, that's still kol toicha. Because grinding something up and you're not making it more edible, bechlal, then it's not totally the toicha. Okay. So what was it before you? Did correct, it? correct. Right. Now, what about untying bundles in front of an animal? You are allowed to do that. You can break apart. What's opening bundles is something that if there's a big toirach, a big toirach is called doimen lemalacha. It's not nevila de malach. It's called uvda dechal. So what do you, uvda dechal is the hardest thing to define. Like how do you define big? How do you define small? I don't know. Halacha yutas. Chavile pay of ezer v'kardnes bundles of oh, these are all different types of ezer hisab hisab that, that were used for spices pay ezer v'kardnes sheichnis and lamaichel beimo so the din is that even though you brought them into the house as animal food mistapik mahen you are allowed to take some of it v'koytem v'oichel v'roshi etz v'oisav. Even though you gathered it, Michael Bahama, that's an important dinner we're going to learn later. But since it also is always Michael Adam, so therefore they're not Muksa, and you can take some of them. However, but you cannot break off large amounts. And what made up happening here, if you're going to use this type of uh, herb, this type of hisab, you might end up grinding it, you might end up crushing it. Which is a tool of grinding. If you have to uh, cut up peppers into little pieces, in order to put it in your foot on Shabbos. So, make it do it in an unusual way. It means use the handle of your knife or use the actual plate, like turn your plate over perpendicular and stand it up and knock on it. And oh, now that we explain how any type of usual types of grinding of herbs is mamish toichen, that's why Chazal made it not to take remedies on Shabbos, because And now, guys, we're not speaking about a choyli, even a choyli, even a choyli she'en by sakana is allowed to take medicine, right? You have a body, then you have a michush, for the level of michush is where you're not allowed to take medicines. Choyle sheyesh by sakona, guys, for that to even be, you can, you can be machal Shabbos. But the, even a choyle, sheyen by sakona, that would be someone who's bed bound. There's no gzeda. The gzeda is for a person who has a michush. Ketzad, lo yoyk. Michush means that you're not feeling well, but you're still functioning. That is the category in which Chazal said, don't take medicines. Ketzad, lo yoyk halo dem donem sheyem achil amariyam. I remember already, the first example is if there is a food that you are taking for its medicinal powers, but other healthy people eat it as well, right? That's also not included. You know what's included? Having something that healthy people don't eat. It's exclusively consumed when you have an illness, like ezoivioin upua. Nor should you eat the vodim that make you have a loose bouts, like la'ana. Can you imagine you can't even eat them? Because since this is a food that only ill people eat, you might end up uh, grinding it. Like mayim shibish loisam one of us of it. On the other hand, you are allowed to eat foods or drink liquids that healthy people eat, even though you are doing it because you're not feeling well. Like hakuzbar, like kishus, like ezoy. 
even though that they're healing you, and your kavan of eating it, you are allowed to eat it. Why? Now, that's what Rav Moshe said, one of the big poiskim. They said that vitamins, you can have, not everyone says that way, because since it's Michael Barim or any other preventative, correct? Uh, you can argue, oh, no, I'm not going to... Okay, we're not learning Gilcha Shabbos, Allah Chalamaisa, but there are many other Yisuri Shabbos where you have a machlekes in a place, whether you say that Shayach today, because people do them or have them even when they're healthy. Shasa Chiltis, Mikhaidim Shabbos. Now we're going to learn Chiltis also today for another time. Chiltis is some type of plant. And when people had chest pains, they would, they would have that plant or they would make it into a drink and drink it up. Now, this is a remedy, ironically, that you take a few days in a row. And if you start taking this medication and you stop in the middle, you get into more trouble. So if you drink Chiltis Mikoidim Shabbos, we'll see, people would have it for three days. That means we're going to see clearly that I'm is going to write later. If you took it Thursday, you took it Friday, now drink it today. Don't forget, guys, all of this is only in Isra Darabana. You might end up grinding other herbs for medicines. Here, because here, if you will not take it, you will get more ill. They allowed you to do it. Once you are already in the middle of of taking a, antibiotics. antibiotics, I would say is, for, is a chayla. You could even argue it's to prevent a chayla shi'ish by sakana. It's mamish mutter. Because, even, because this is to me, if a person has an infection, these infections put your life in danger. Okay. Now, the hagu, shoysim zeysim ha-mitzri, zeysim ha-mitzri was some sort of mixture that had salt and it had barley flour and it had karkam seed that may be consumed in all places. In other words, it's considered a drink that Briam had, even if put in your location, only ill people have it. It's called a, a, a it's a consumption that Briam do as well. All types of oils. Now we're speaking about ointing, right? But any oil, guys, we're not speaking about ointments. Ointments can be memachic, right? That's something else. We're speaking about something that's already a liquid, like an oil. The problem with the oil will only be if it's derech refuah. So he says that all oils, if derech habriyam lasuch b'hem, muter lasuch b'hem b'shabes. Even though you're smearing yourself with it because you want to get better. However, v'she'en habriyam sachan oisan, only done by ill people, then it's included in the gzeit of not taking medicine on Shabbos. Asurin. So the achosh is b'masna, a person has his groin, his groinal areas, it has a discomfort. And people then, only ill people that would not be feeling well, they would smear wine and vinegar. These are two liquids. There's no issue of rubbing over here. Because you take medicine. Because shaman is, 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 is everyone uses it. Now, shaman vetted is a very expensive shaman. So since it also has a medicinal, it has a curative uh, potency, but since it's very expensive, people only use it in most places if they're ill. So Idramam says it goes by case by case. You're not allowed to use it in a common place. That if you're living in Vesach in Beverly Hills, people are very wealthy. And even people that are not ill, they smear themselves with the Shem and Vedid. Even though you're doing it with a fua, in your locality, it's done even for Miriam. Another day, Some Sabayayim. The person has some sort of sore, right? Then they can, they can smear on it. Wine, but they can't smear vinegar. The imha your onoig and putting wine is going to cause at least the body to heal more. After yayin also, it's going to okay. Right, that Allah chabdal choshesh b'shinov. If your teeth are hurting, people would sip through their teeth vinegar. That would be a, something that only ill people did, only sick people did. So lo yigama b'hem as achaim it's v'yiflay. Don't sip it through your teeth and spit it out. Avol nigame hu baleya. Because uh, sucking on vinegar and swallowing it is something that some Briyam do. Even though you're doing it to heal your teeth, your toothache. Another thing. Apple if, cider vinegar. Huh? Apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Drink it yes. But again, to help. Yeah, but the Ramam, I don't think he's saying that. He's saying that some people stomach had it. Some people do it, so therefore if you're That's what you can do, correct. Achoshish begroin, if you have a throat, your throat is sore, loyir ar enu b'shemen. Don't gargle with oil. Gargling is already a uh, refuah. But again, if you put it in your mouth and you're swallowing it without gargling it, without gargling it, but you need a lot of oil. So you're swallowing a lot of 
The misnape nisnape. Another ain't lo yasen es hamastike. Can't chew gum. The ain't shofen es hashenai b'sam b'shabes. Because these were these were gums that were only chewed when you had toothaches. This man shem is chavon l'refua, but the ain't another than anything that you're putting in your mouth to take away bad breath. In is chavon l'reya chaped, then it's muter. Allah uh, chafei. In other words, taking away bad breath is not refua. That's the key. Even though the items that you're using sometimes can also come to be crushed. Allah chafei. It could be refua for people around you. That's for sure. Sar oynik shabbos. You may not put a wine out. Certain things you can do as a So this putting wine in your eyes, you have to understand how you appreciate when we have these schoolers, right? By Abdullah. In times of Chazal, it was actually at a four. But you can't put it in your eyes, but you can put it right above the eyes, even though it's going to trickle down. Because it's not direct. Another thing, Roy Truffle, saliva that a person has prior to eating. And let me add, prior to brushing your teeth. That has creative powers. Definitely keeps everyone else away. Curative, thank you. Afilo al gava ayin. That is so, it's such a medicine that you, not only can you not put it in your eye, you can't even put it above your eye. Yaakov, you look very happy. Kiloid. Kiloid is an ointment. Shashara oisim erev Shabbos. Ma'avira al gava ayin of ayin Because you made it before. Again, you're not putting it directly in, this habit of putting it near the wound, right? Right, Misha Lakabed's boy, if a person, uh, your finger became wounded, don't wind it with a reed to heal it, nor can you squeeze it out for blood to go out, right? That's all uh, reform, you know, that's a mechush ba'alma, you're not bed bound. Okay, halacha chavav. Now, guys, I know that we have the word chaymets. Many other Rambams are going to chamen. Let's go with the chamen. Don't put hot water and oil on a wound, nor on a moich, on a cotton bandage that's already on your makkah. Not even putting it first on the moich and then put it on your wound. Here again, this indirect. You can put the hot water and the oil right near the wound. And the choices for you in the Lamaka. Guys, don't forget, all of these things are only are awesome. The guy never has sick. So they, 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 they certain times they said you can do it a little bit with Tashinoi. The Noisnen Moich Yavish Adabe Amaka. If you already have this bandage and it's already dry, you can put it back. Right? The Imhoya Atik, Asur, the Pneshi Hikiritiyo. But if this Moich was used before, and, and it already has in it different types of ointments and creams, right? Even though it was pre-used, this, this moich atik had creative uh, properties. I don't know if it, because there was, there was some medicine in it or could be some, they felt that certain cotton, old cotton can cure you. And anything that's considered healing may not be done. Anything that's, the other thing is you want to put on something on your wound that shouldn't get infected or other dirt should not go in. That's not a problem. We're speaking about putting something that will heal it. Halacha oh. If a bandage fell and it fell on a didn't fall on the ground, the point is like this, guys. You cannot put on a brand new retia on Shabbos. So if it fell on the ground, putting it back is as if it's never used before. You understand? If it was already done before, then you can put it back. The whole issue is again that you might end up doing a malacha because of the general rule, Sha'in Shwas Bamigdash. And that's a big statement because this whole in Shwas Bamigdash, aside of us having this whole Sugi and Shas giving us exceptions to it, it became clear, according to many Rishonim, that that's only when it's direct malacha related, the, the direct avoida related. This is not the rate, this is not the related to, uh, to avoida. How is it related to avoida? Adarabo. You know, when a coin does an avoida, anything that creates a chatzitza is even a problem. It can be a chatzitza between his garments and, 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 and his body. It can be a chatzitza on his right hand between his hands and the keli and, the, and, the, and the, whatever he's holding in the base of Migdosh. But anyway. He to heal faster so that he can get back to the Say that. Okay, that's already indirect. Okay, good. The Ramam doesn't say that. The Ramam holds that ancient when Migdosh applies to this. When you are always a lot of clean, clean the, you know, the opening of the wound. But but you may not clean out the bandage. Shema Yimrach, 
you might squeeze ointment on it or squeeze ointment out of it, memoreach, right, which was what was done as they're preparing the hides. We have to be very careful with that. You can apply oil and massage your intestines on Shabbos, but in an unusual way. Guys, these, these were massages that were done at a four. Unlike what they normally would do is, is that first they would put the oil and then they would give you a massage. And what's wrong with that? We well, said before that putting oil on your body is allowed, right? The answer is because that's that's the doimen lemelacham, not mevim ledei melacham. It's just doimen lemelacham, or call this ubda the choyl. Furthermore, right? Kedusha ways of The ain mis amlim b'shamis. You may not exercise your body on Shabbos. Now there were two ways of doing exercise. One way of doing exercise is that you do nothing; someone else does something for you. That's uh, they have to figure that out well over here. So there was a certain type of massage that was done for you in order to get your body to sweat. The goal was to sweat. Mm. So number one, Ezo Miss Amel, either that other people are going to be trampling on your body in order for you to be uh, exerted and for you to schwitz. See, never he still get exerted, but it's like it's it's a more macabre type of exercise. or walk very quick. Why? If the goal is for you to sweat, it's because that's something that's only done by ill people. And therefore, it's little for uh, Exercise is only for So I'm saying, let's go. I'm not going to, okay, we're learning, we're not learning halacha la maisa, but I'm oh. saying uh, it, it's something that's also done by Biriam. If Michael Biriam will be muter, so that will be the. Here the Ramam says, don't, the Ramam says, don't do exercise on Shabbos. The Moises, where is there was a certain type of mud that it, pushed, it was almost like quicksand. So when you stood on it, you needed to exert yourself a lot. The goal of going there was to get, was to uh, schwitz. It, it wasn't, it wasn't the uh, minerals in the mud. The Ramam writes, that it worked. You needed to exert yourself in there. I think it was a certain type of quicksand. It's like going on a treadmill. In other words, you're in a place that if you're not going to move, you're going to be in trouble. And um, today, today we have trainers to do the work for us. We do nothing. Today we just pay him. We give him a transfer. That's it. Halacha <laughs> chavtes. Don't wash yourself in water that causes diarrhea. Nor in quicksand here. There was some uh, medicinal purpose. Nor the the, the 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 flax that was soaked, those liquids, when they got good, uh, sm- uh, when they smelled bad, they, all of these things brought a remedy. Right, many people today they go into Yama Melach, push it to heal themselves. But the Ramam writes, all of these things may not be done because they bring you tsar. The place call elu tsarheim, and the trader says, "Vekarasal Shabbos Oynik." In other words, this is already maybe because healthy people also bathe in the Yamamel. So you can't say it's because of the Rafua, but it's because it brings you tsar. But therefore, if you go in and out and it doesn't bring you any tsar, then it's not a problem. Even though you have sores on your scalp. Now, what's the even though? I, I don't know. Either it means even though if you have a wound, you go into Yamamel, it's going to burn you even if you go quick, or even though it's going to heal it. It's mamish little four. Going in and out is allowed. Halacha lamet. Ein misgardim be mig be mig You may not scrape your skin with a utensil that's done for that purpose. Im ha'yir yolim mechalachas b'tzoyi. But if your hands are soiled either with excrement or with tit, and you need to have that utensil not to heal your body but to clean off dirt, then goyder kedarkoi. Next thing. You are allowed to apply oil and peel off skin, like when you have a burn. After a while, those dry skins. This may not be done for an animal, but if the animal has sad, then you are allowed to do it. Like we learned before, anything that's only asked in the generally, if there's tsar involved, right here, tsar balachaim, then there's no Easter to begin with. If an animal ate a lot of peas, and, 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 you know, when you overeat, even today, what do you do? One solution is either vomit, which we'll see in a moment, whether you're allowed to do it or not, or, or run around a lot, like work it off. You are allowed to do it. 
If an animal has high blood pressure, so what do you do for high blood pressure? You are allowed to bring the animal into cold water in order for it to cool down. Maybe because this is already very sick or because there's tsar. So there's a balance in which there are going to be many a tatum for this issue of Rufua B'Shabbos. Allah Chalamad Allah. Eight makinas o'echel B'Shabbos. You may not make yourself vomit on Shabbos. If you're making yourself vomit by having, by having a potion, the sum. That's called medicine. Shema Yisraq Samamanim. You might end up grinding. But to put your fingers in your mouth and make yourself vomit, then muta. If a child is constipated, one solution was you would press down on his belly. You're not allowed to do that. You might end up giving him a potion, which may not be done. It's interesting. I, he's a tinoik. That's the word. You know, the yadayim, the yadayim, you don't do that. They would have a, a person would have a herniated navel. So one solution would be you take a cup and through the suction, you would somehow manipulate the hernia. You, you are allowed to t- turn the cup upside down and put it on the navel in order to, uh, to, to fix that hernia. Guys, um, we learned about this. You want to straighten out his limbs or you want to, you want to straighten out his ears. We spoke about that before. Whether you're using a hand, right, a chiropractor, or whether he's using a keli. And also there were certain uh, muscles around the chest that sometimes you would manipulate those muscles to relieve pain. These are certain types of curative practices which never demand the curative, the, cons- sure. the consumption of herbs. For you to have a chashash, you might end up, uh, you might end up grinding them. It, it, it has nothing to do with grinding and therefore... And and the yesh white side, you need to have both of these things. Okay. Can you take? Can you have a massage done to you on Shabbos? Which massage made you sweat? Halavai. I don't know if such a thing. It makes them sweat. It's not a problem. I know Al Tareba says not to do it. But anyway, so this the Ramam doesn't mention that. The Ramam can clearly mention that. That's correct. Okay, halacha lamid base. Hamirake, let's go right there. Sifting. Sifting is mavis malachas. And the fikach ain't craven in the satava mikavada. You may not sift straw with a sieve. In order, she had a tamayt, because that's kamirake. Uh, however, I'm a loy tell hat tevin bakavado may look like abos, but if while you are carrying the straw into the feeding trough, you're walking quickly. And when you're walking quickly, the wind is blowing away some of the uh, klipa. It's not a psikresha. And again, the Raman Paskin is like Rabshim and Mutter. A person who is uh, kneading, right? Or you're creating any type of mixture with particles that are that halachically adhere together. Remember, we learned, like the Raman already Paskin, that Afer. It never really adheres. That Imam said that above, right? Right? A thick, coarse sand can be mixed with water, but because they don't adhere, but other items that become become one gush, you may not do that because of needing. You may not um, make a mixture of a large amount of roasted flour because you might end up kneading them together. And you might end up kneading flour that's not roasted. No, it's flour that's roasted never adheres together. A flour that's not Kali. Wasn't it between the, uh, the gabel and wash? It's a, lush is kneading when you're kneading the flour and water, and the gabel is any two articles that halachically become one, one gush. Because when it comes to uh, grains, that, that there, and you roasted them, and then you had that ground up, and now it looks like sand, and that was called shatis. This is so far removed of you doing something that's us. But again, nira kolosh. Nira kolosh is not that it might bring you. Nira kolosh, right? It's doim elamalach. And even when you do it, even when you do it, you have to do it in an unusual way, Kate said. 
and then put the vinegar, which is the opposite way of making it. Halacha lamadal. Hamursan, which is coarse bread. Even if it's unneedable halachically, like we mentioned, things that are very coarse, even when you mix it with another substance, it doesn't adhere together halachically. It's nevertheless, ain goivlin oisoi, because shema yobin ligboy ha offer. Guys, don't aphid, we said that Ramam says, cannot be adhere. But offer does. That's the way they would make chvei cement. Vechayoitzavoy. Nois namayin al gama mursan, you are allowed to put water on this coarse bread. Umoyloch by tarbat. And then when you put the spoon in, don't mix it normally. How do you mix it on your, your normally? Just make a movement of shasi and a move and a movement of adif. You understand? That's an re- unusual way of mixing it. Go like this, go like that, go like this, go like that, instead of stirring it. Yeah. If it's not mixed, one way of mixing things together in an unusual way is having two kalim and you pour one into the other. In other words, if you're using the tarva, the spoon, but it's not mixing at all. It's coarse bread, then we you know move it back and forth. As long as you're making the shinoi, as long as you made the shinoi, even if you're doing a large amount, now that you have it mixed enough to feed it to animals, this is coarse bread, then you can separate it in different kalim. Okay, as a general rule, you may not force feed. That's the taich over here. All of these animals on Shabbos, the way you feed them, because you might end up grinding different legumes, because this is what you normally would do when you would force feed animals. Yes, you could. We're not advocating to do it, but that was the halach. That was the common. That, that's the way they did it. And you can argue with Sarbal I can say for sure that when they were doing it prior to the shechting of an animal to make the animal fat, there's no such a concept of Sarbal Achaim if there's a tzayrech adam. You minimize. If not, the Ramam wrote that. The Ramam, if not, how can you shecht an animal? How can you ride on a horse? You're doing it for a tzayrech. It's not stam. Okay. What's called force feeding? When you would fill him up with food that normally he would eat over th- three or four days, they would do that prior to our journey. The Layarbit's eagle, the way they would force feed is that they would lay them down, they would put them in a position, right? That they can't move. When you put into the mouths of these birds, so the definition of force feeding is not the position you put them in, but how far down do you push it? So if they put it in the mouth, in a, not that deep down. That the animal can gurgitate, if that's the word. Then it's not called force feeding. But you can't put it that far deep down that the animal has no bread of this bird other than just to keep it inside him. But if the animal is standing and you give it drinking while it's standing, and you're only putting it in a place where it could uh, spit it out, that's not a problem. That you can put as much food as you want in front of you. Okay. In other words, guys, the issue of force feeding is not feeding animals. The issue of force feeding is, is because they would normally grind up legumes and therefore you might end up doing it. Now, Bechlal, can you feed animals? So the final Allah in the Spadic says that Bechlal, you can feed animals, is the animals that you are obligated to feed, which are domesticated animals that you own. The Hemtoi, even the Chayoisoi, the Yoyne Habayis, the Avazam Ratanagoyim. However, in contrast, with Misha aims and I all of animals that you're not obligated to feed, even if you own them like a chazit, like yoinim that you own, but they live in the coop and they, you know, they, they fly out to get food. Who divide them bees? You don't feed the bees. You're not allowed to feed them. So we learned the last pedic yesterday about animals doing the So can I? Uh, put my animal on grass and have the animal they eat grass, I'm chayf to feed it. What's the issue? The issue is that he's, he's quite said, you are allowed to do it because the trader says, Laman Yanuach. That's what the Gemara says. Laman Yanuach Shor Chavach And how can you say that the animal is going to be in a state of Menucha if he's in Tsar because he's starving? It's the opposite of Laman Yanuach. And you can even put your animals there. 
Aval, what you may not do is you may not put your animal right on top of something that's muksa. Again, we're going to learn the name muksa beginning in Chavdal and Chafei Chava. V'oymed b'fanel. No, v'loyamad oisay al gabad over muksa. Now, what happens if there is something muksa, but I can't bring the animal directly? I can cause my animal to go the ramat zone. What do I mean by causing my animal? The animal can go in any direction you want. The muksa is only to the sharp right. So you stand in front of the animal whenever it wants to go to any other place until the animal ends up going there. And then, and the same thing is anyantiv. So if you are indirectly causing the animal to get there, whatever it sees, it eats. Many people are the way. If they see food, they're hungry, not hungry. You see it, you eat it. So by the animal is for sure that way. So you, you make him see the muksa that you are allowed to do. And Chavra, a muzzle to Ivan Pedic Chav. Aleph, now we're moving on to Pedic Chav Beis, like we spoke about in the introduction. Mamish Bahashgah Chapratis. Chav Aleph, Chav Beis, Chav Gimel have one theme. We're speaking about activities, not Av, not Tulda. They're not Mimsay Chavticha, they're not Tabad Dover, they're not Muks. That's going to be later. But they are going to be included in the Isra that we call Shvus, which is either a Dairais or a Darabanan. The Ramam says it's a Darabanan because the most is Masurua Hatoira. To define what the word Tishbois means, some of the Tishbois is an Asmachta, it's a pure Darabanan, in the following one of the two categories, either because it's Doiman Lamalacha, not because you might end up doing the Malacha, because it looks like a Malacha, like we had some of them, and the bulk in quantity for sure, what we learned so far is that Chazal said, don't do this because they might make you do a Malacha. Like, don't take it a fool because you might end up grinding herbs. It's already not that big. It only has 33 halachas. Another one on 36, starting with halacha alaf. Guys, what we need is this joy. And I can say that exercise during the week is definitely permitted. If you feel tired, get up and make 10 squats or more, and that will be it. Halacha alaf. Removing the bread from the oven. Why is it not called a malacha? Because that, what, what, you remember that? It's called chachma ve'ena malacha. So it's not a malacha. Nevertheless, also the way Sachachamim. Why? Not because it's Uvda the Choyl. Because Shema Yobri La Efois. It's Mevin La Dei Melach. Now, if you put the bread in the oven before Shabbos, and now it's Shabbos, and you don't have any other bread other than that which is already in the oven, so the Chazal were lenient. Matzmatzel Memenu Mosan Shalvish Shaudais. You can remove for what you need for the three meals. And not only can you remove it, but you can invite guests and tell them, listen. If it's going to stay in the oven another half an hour, it's going to burn. I'm not allowed to take it down. You might as well take it for your mazin. Now, even though the di again is not a malacha, in the cases where you are allowed to remove the bread from the oven, don't do it the way you do it in the week. So, some sort of scoop, says in the English, in a baker's peel. It's the keli that was used by the professionals to remove it. Ella, remove it with a knife. You're not going to remove it with your hands. Your hands will get burnt. We move it in an unusual way. Kedai Lashanis. Halacha number two. The pneuma, the pneuma, also Chachamim, the Konis Lamechatz, the Shabbos. Why did the Chachamim make a decree? You may not enter a bathhouse on Shabbos. The pneuma, Balonim, Balonim are the owners of the bathhouses. Shoy Mecham and Chamim, the Shabbos. Big Machlek is whether they were Yidin or Goyim. In other words, if they were Yidin, if that's the way most people learn, so just because some people are Machal Shabbos, Otto Berisha Askinon, or whatever. Many people say, yeah, that, that's the fact that since many people were Machal Shabbos and they got away with it because the, the customers were told, hey, the water was warmed up from before. But they, they warmed it on Shabbos and they said be warmed it from out of Shabbos. We're not speaking, you didn't pay them on Shabbos, but it doesn't matter. There are many services that cost money, like you go into a you know prepaid uh, Shabbos program, you go into a restaurant, you pay for it fry, you pay post, you know, even though it's a service for which you pay, you can use, you can use that service on Shabbos, but you can't use a bathhouse. So the Chachamah made Exeter, don't enter a bathhouse, and they went further. Even if you're not going to enter the water, you're only going to Schwitz, you also may not do that. Now, now, I want to point out something regarding Schwitzing. Why wouldn't Schwitzing be Asur, Bechlau, because it's a Rafua? I think the answer is, is because, again, if you know that just like foods or drinks, if it's Michael Berim, even though you're taking it with a fuwa, it's not a problem. I think Schwitzing was commonly done then. So we don't view it as a fuwa at all. The problem will be you can't Schwitz in a bathhouse, huh? Wouldn't Schwitzing be necessarily that they heated it up on Shabbos? 
No, 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 absolutely not. Because they had, you have to know how to work. They had a lot of fuel. The fuel was set up before. People would make a special lihirats and not to die in a bathhouse because it was so much source of fire under the planks that you were standing on. No, no, that coals there and things stayed hot for a very long amount of time. We're going to see in a moment. Oh, now, the gazru, shaloi, you start to So number one is you can't enter a bathhouse, which means you can't enter, enter the bath. You can't even enter the room to schwitz. Now, what about a shower? What about rinsing all of your body? So we differentiate in halacha whether you are rinsing all of your body at one time or whether you're rinsing limb by limb. The gazru also, shaloi, you start to call of Shabbos. However, if you want to rinse your face and your hands and your feet with waters that were warm from before Shabbos, not, it's completely mutter. With, with waters that were heated through fire. Gezeira, that if you're going to warm yourself in your house, it's all about that you're going to go to a bathhouse. It's all about, and then they're going to end, they're going to end up lighting the fires on Shabbos. But waters that are hot, but no one will warm them up. They are naturally warmed up. Mutter, guys, not to bathe, but to rinse your body off with their waters. See the difference? However, likewise, the Ramam says you can't go into any other hot waters that are in caves. Why? Because those hot waters... They, in these caves, it, it was a very hot area. People walked in there, they would schwitz. You can't walk into any area. You can't walk into a schwitz, basically. Even though there's not shaykh to make a Once they made a gzeda, don't schwitz. So don't go into any scenario where your whole body will end up schwitz. And that's your kavana. So I think they had in Khamit it was outdoors. And they had, the, you could have gone near one of the pools and taken water from it and thrown it on you. It's okay. It wasn't inside a cave. Masha Inkin, hot waters that are in a cave. So the whole environment is hot. Halach Gimel. A person. So now, now can, you, can, you, can you go into a cold bath in the times? 100%. So what, even though now we don't do that. So the Ramam says like this. You stand next to a fire. And then rinse off your body in cold water. He's not speaking about bathing. Why did people do that? Because you can rinse your body in cold water. There's no problem. But you're very, you're very uh, cold. So you can stand next to something very hot and then rinse your body cold water. And then go stand next to a, uh, a fire. You know why? Because the water that's on you gets heated. If you are, you're, you're, you're making a duck of water go through hot water what happens is, is that when that water when the pipe goes through hot water the water in the pipe becomes hot i feel that that is like even though you even though you did nothing wrong guys if you remember we learned that mabashel was only by ash and told us so ash but the is not included you can't do that because you can't bathe in hot water Right, as vasudam erechitza, and nor you may not drink it. Halacha dale, maybe adam kitten shomayim amanicha kenek and amadura. A person is allowed to bring a flask of cold water and put it near a big madura, not in order for it to get hot. That's a problem. But you're bringing it like it's like on the side of the blech, close enough that the chill of the water should be removed. That's not a problem. El kadesh davik sinos. The chen maniach pach shel shaman. You are allowed to bring a, a a jug of congealed oil, and you're bringing it near the fire. Simply to make it melt, to make it liquidy. Another than this, Adam Yadimayim Abishaman, you are allowed to smear a little bit of oil and oil and then stand up next to the fire. But you can't get the water that hot. That's called Yatsi Ladis Bam, or Kedesa Shaltinik gets burnt. You are allowed to take a garment. Put it on uh, near fire, get it very hot, and put it on your stomach. That's something that you are allowed to do. Allah hey. Interestingly, why would people do that? Well, it's if it's pure, because maybe darak biriyam. It's not considered a fuah to the point that you can't do it. Allah hey. Ambati shal merchats. A bathtub 
in a bathhouse that's filled with hot water. Don't put a cup of cold water in it, like we learned before, you know, a pipe of cold water, in order for it to get hot. Because it looks like you're cooking the oil. You have a mabad shalsoyna and it's freezing. You want to go into the bath of cold water. Before the minute of not to do so, you were allowed to do so. The last story in the Sech the Shabbos was, I think it was Zerabah taking a cold bath. So you are allowed to, no, it's freezing. You can add hot water just to take away the chill. Mecham shepina memen and urn. You completely emptied out the urn. So now there's nothing in the urn, but the keli itself is hot. You are allowed to put in this urn cold water to cool it off. Again, it's just about to take away the chill. You are allowed to pour either hot water and cold water or cold water and hot water when the and if it's not on a clay nation, it's not a problem. Bechal to know that Amam holds nekuda ein bishalach arbishu. Okay, hello, Mike. Bechem kedera reisachas. If you had a boiling pot, afal pisho heridem alo eish. Since it's still the clay nation, don't put in a tavlin, but you are allowed to put in salt. Interestingly, because salt only cooks when it's mamash on the big fire. Another day, the im saka tavshol nekedera likaona. If you pour the tavshol. From the kedera that was on the fire into your plate, even though it's still boiling hot, even the spices. Oh, because the Ramam Paskins shekle sheni is not the vashel period. Halach is zayin ancient on esachiltis. Don't place the chiltis in hot water, not in hot water nor in cold water. Why is that? Because that's called uvda the choil chabra avol shedo eisvute chachemis, but you are allowed to soak it in vinegar. Now, as we learned in the previous chapter regarding this uh, type of uh, remedy that you took two days in a row, the im shasim chamishi v'shishi, harizah shoyda v'shavuz v'tsoyinim. Umani chabacham atshayi cham v'shoyisa. Why? K'day shu lo yechlem prosek melishtois. That's why we were not there taking out of four v'shavuz. Because you already, be, you already began this regimen and if you stop in the middle, you're going to get worse. Allah ha'ches. Dovar shen is bashul kaydem v'shavuz. Something that was completely cooked from before Shabbos. Or it was soaked in hot water before Shabbos. Even though now it's cold, guys, you can soak it in hot water. Why? Now, something that never was cooked. You can't soak it in hot water, right? That's going to be cooking it, but you are allowed to rinse it. With the exception, when did we learn this exception? I think it was yesterday or two days ago. There were certain fishes, right? The, uh, the ispanin, that just rinsing it in, in hot water would already come out of Then you can't even rinse it. But other than that, you can rinse it. In other words, soaking it, guys, soaking something in hot water, never. Rinsing it in most cases. The only time you may not rinse it in hot water if the rinse is the Gemara Malachi. You are allowed to eat food in the sun. How, how amazing is that? Midr Abanan told us Chama's Asur because a person might end up doing it with Tolda Sa'ur. But if you are directly using the sun, Everyone knows you're using the sun. No one will make a mistake that you can use fire. And therefore, you are allowed to put cold water in the, in the sun in order for it to get hot. Now, Kevin, understand something that sometimes, if it's here in the Death Valley, you, 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 you're talking about bringing the water to, to, to more than Yatsin Landis. Mamish. You can do that because it's directly in the sun. Wow. By the way, this last halacha, is you want to put it in the pit, right? You don't want it to be overheated. You want to keep it cool, even though when you put something in the pit, you might be mashvagumais. We don't say that. But I'm storing it in a pit. Halacha yud. A person is allowed to mix water, salt, and oil. And the toivel by pitai, oi, nois, noi. But that's only, what's the issue? Only if you make a little bit of time. Why? Because it's food related and you're making a lot of it. Looks like you're cooking. Don't mix very strong salt water. You're you saying not to make like a dressing for like a salad? Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. That's not hard. That's not what you need for the meal. That's more than what you need. 
Don't make very strong salt water. What's very strong? Two thirds salt and one third salt, third water. They, not over here because certain things don't adhere. These items don't adhere. Very good. The place nira ko'isa murias. Murias. See guys like this. Koivish kumavashal. And that, we're going to learn something about pickling over here. Since the fish was soaked in such strong salts, that is something that you can't do on Shabbos. It's like a matter of sign. Why would you have something that's that salty? Ah, you're making murias. Don't do that. Muta limlech beitzi, you're allowed to salt an egg. Abel tsunoin, or a radish, you can't salt. Again, because since radishes were commonly um, pickled, and you're not allowed to do that on Shabbos. Why can't you pickle? Because pickle is like a mavash. But you are allowed to dip the radish or other articles in melon. In other words, you're making yashinoi. Because when you would pickle it, you would put the salt on it. So putting the salt on it, even though you're not planning to pickle it, is also because you need it. But if you're dipping it in salt and eating it, it doesn't even look like you're pickling it. You are allowed to mix wine, honey, and peppers. On Shabbos to eat it, well, that's the issue. We'll tell you in a second. I will, yeah, you know, mind the shem and a parsim, and you may not mix together. Why? Because the Ramam says in his times and further back in the times of Chazal, that was only done for, for uh, medicinal purposes, and therefore it's included in the issue of she'en zeroi lachilas biriim. So we're not even talking about consuming it. No, it's on the last page we spoke about consuming medicine. Here we're speaking about doing something which is normally done only for a medicine. Don't even do it on Shabbos. Mustard that has already been mixed. Now, like we mentioned also, when you, even though it was mixed, at the end you want to squeeze it. You are allowed to squeeze it beyond the keli. But don't whip it forcefully. What's the issue? You're going to smooth it out. Oh. You are allowed to you know, mix it up. Which is cress or a certain spicy leaf. Shetaraf on the Erev Shabbos that it was already beaten from before Shabbos. But but you can't beat it up. You can only mix it up. Shum Shadiskim Erev Shabbos. If you have garlic that was crushed on Friday, to, tomorrow you can put that crushed garlic inside gerisim, inside peas. Again, things have to be done the nachas because a certain level of yishchayk or yishchayk. I'm sorry, might be connected to mimoreach. Allah you give Allah nectar say we go for Adam we learn that if you're removing care from a human being is khaybun shum goizis let think of therefore us or lil khayts as you die they used to wash their hands down on water but in certain grains and some of them would rub off your hairs you can't wash your hands without a shamash as a say badai like ahala but you are allowed to wash your hands but afar lavoina they would grind up frankincense or the afar pilpulin because since your intent is not to remove hairs as long as it is not sick ratio. We pass like Rab Shimon Mutter. For Afar Yasmin, or you know, you have a jasmine power, is okay. What happens if you have these two things mixed together? Uh, with something, so the Ramam says, follow the right. This is amazing. You may not look in a mirror on Shabbos if the mirror is a metal utensil that has very sharp edges, which will allow you to actually take that mirror and trim your hair. Also, leaders will not have some attacks on Shabbos. Gizera, this is only if the edges are sharp, that when you will see that one hair is not aligned with the other. You might, and, and you don't have to get a scissors. That you're not going to do. You're not going to go get a cable. You might, that you remember it, Shabbos, but if it's right there, there might be one here that's protruding from the other. And even if the mirror is affixed to the wall so you can't remove it, that's called loy plug. Once they made the gazeta, loy plug. But a mirror, even if it's glass, right? Even if it's not fixed, because people normally would not use that as a means of cutting, they would go get a keli, and that chazal we're not afraid of. I, Toysu says, your bachlal may not look in a mirror. So we learned that in the Toysu. Toysu says, time to know that a man looking in a mirror is leisel bash. So it means a woman. Or if you're living in a country where men look in the mirror, there comes a point where they, oh, there's, a certain, there's a certain amount of leisel bash that changes according to the Zman of Makam. Halacha Tezva. Hamachabes. Laundering clothing is chayv neshum Therefore, when you squeeze the water out of a garment, you have to show Okay? 
let's go. Also, let's go. You want to, you have, you have a keli, and it has a little opening, and you want to little opening, and you want to stop it up, and you're going to use a cloth stopper. You cannot do that. Why? Because when you squeeze it in tightly, maybe that stopper of material will absorb water, and when you press it in, or when you remove it, you squeeze it more, and you squeeze the water out. You may not clean things with a sponge, only if the sponge has a handle, because if you're going to grab onto the sponge, you're going to be squeezing out the water. You may not cover, imagine, you may not even cover a barrel with a cloth that was not made to cover it with. Guys, if the cloth was made to cover the barrel, what's going to happen when you cover a barrel with liquids? The cloth will become wet. If it was made for that, it's not going to bother you. You're not going to squeeze it out. But taking another garment and to cover it, you think the water is five inches down. You think the garment is going to remain dry. If the garment is going to get wet, if a cask of liquid will break on Shabbos, they allowed for you, right, um, not, not to sponge things up. Here's the issue, because then, how did you save liquids? Many times when they would save liquids, they would take garments, they would put it on the ground, and then they would squeeze it out of the garment. So first of all, you can't, other than what you need for the Shabbos, you can save. And even what you need, make sure, the only way you can really save it is by getting another keli, putting it underneath it. And again, they gave you a limit, and the limit is only for what you and your guests need for Shabbos. How do you save it? Maybe keli, you bring a keli and you put it underneath it. Since you can only use a keli, not the other means again of putting down a garment, because then you might then you're going to squeeze out the garment on Shabbos. Only one keli. The moment you'll be allowed to take more than one keli, even if you need three keli for you and your archim, you 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 know that other than the keli, it's going to get lost. So you, you're under pressure. You might end up carrying a keli. This archim. Maybe maybe say keli achar v'koylet, keli achar keli. What's a sorry for liration? Ah, if again, if you have archim, then there's an exception that's made. If if archim actually arrived, then you are allowed to bring another keli. And oh, oh, so in other words, the first keli is not done yet. It's filling up the first keli, Danny. So what I'm doing is archim came. I need more. I'm putting a keli underneath, over the keli on the ground. So it's catching the liquids from the air. So the bottom keli, right, did not get filled up yet. So now I got another keli. And then I can use them both together. But you know, you know, the only way I can do it is, is that first I invited guests. And now because I invited guests, I need more than what this one keli can contain. So then I can use the system of prior to the bottom keli filling up, I can fill it up in the top keli. But if I'm filling it up and then inviting guests, it's not permitted. Now, the im herem badava, it's really, I wasn't planning on inviting guests. But my barrel of wine is, is getting ruined. The only time, I can only save the whole leader if I have another guest. So I don't even, I, I wasn't planning to invite a guest. But if I invited the guest only to save the wine, so I'm making a, sub, a subterfuge, that's allowed, you're allowed to do that. The herem badava is a But again, as long as, and I'll tell you more than that, if I'm inviting guests, what, what am I benefiting? Because sometimes I know that that guest doesn't drink wine. That's, that's called the haram. That's still okay. Because since I'm inviting a guest and that a person consumes X amount of wine per meal, that will allow me to save more wine. Halacha yudzayim. Teach al bigdoi. If I have mud stuck on my garment, so the issue is laundering. So I'm allowed to be mechas kisoi mibefnim. I can rub it from the opposite side. I'm not rubbing it directly off on the dirty side. But the Enoim is Kaskus and Nebachutz, Shema, Gzeda Shami Yechabes. On after them, you are allowed to scrape off the dirt with your fingernail. The Enoim Chosh Shema Yelavnoi, because that's not the way people launder. They mamish put it in water to launder it. Ham a Kaskes as a Sudar, even only rubbing a, a smaller kerchief, which is something that many people did to clean it. They didn't always use water. That's already awesome, because you're Malabin. Avala Cholok, what a shirt. Mutter, you are allowed to be rub. And when you would actually clean it, you would use water. And therefore, here you are allowed to rub it off in this way on Shabbos. So if you have a shoe or a sandal that got dirtied in Titor Tsoya, Mutter, Lishach, Shechoi, 
you are allowed to rinse it with water. So there's rinsing and washing. Wherever you draw the line, you are allowed to rinse. You're not allowed to wash. You may not scrape. What's the issue of scraping? Scraping leather will make you soften out the leather. So if it's brand new shoes, that's already memoreach. Old ones can be scraped. If you have a pillow or a blanket that you have excrement on it or other dirt, again, you can't wash on Shabbos, but what are you going to do? It's dirty. So then you can make a rag moist with water and you can clean it off with a rag. That's better cleaning than Mekaska soil. You're allowed to do that. The Imois is shown oil. More than that, if it's made out of leather, leather you don't wash, then you can put water on it completely until that dirt is removed. A beggar not, because by a beggar it's malab. And halacha you test me, the mission is slach lacha yoda betit. If your hands are dirty with tit, the kancha is not a You are allowed to clean it off by using the tail of a horse, the tail of a pada, uba mapa akasha in a hard material. Asri lachas be yakoitzim. What not? Avaloi be mapa mishkam of ziyadayim. You may not smear it off with a cloth that people use to clean their hands, <laughs> and what might happen, now guys, this does not go to a washed towel. No, no, no. This, this refers to a washed towel. If you clean yourself in water, you are allowed to dry yourself with a towel and to bring it in your hand. And we are not afraid that because this towel was made for that. I think that's the difference. Something that was made for it, it's not going to bother you that it's wet. Some towel that was not made to get wet, there were high, you're going to squeeze out the water. If your, if your garments got dirty, you can walk on them while you're walking. You might squeeze them out. Because people don't do that when they're walking, even though they don't like it for it to be wet. However, you may not put it out in the sun to dry. For us, even inside your house, why? And he put it out to dry. Even though the emphasis is it got wet because you walked through the river. Are you doing it in your house? No one is seeing because of the rule that anything that's also because of Maras Ayin, I feel of a Hadri Hadarim also. Allah and Chaf Aleph, Shte Metarai Zul Gabzu, two mikvahs one on top of the other. And there would be a plug. This is a boy, Al Gaba boy, right? And so, Noitel Esapkak Mimetayim Mashikan, you are a lot of, you, you can take out the plug, guys. The plugs were not out of rubber. All of these plugs were made out of garments. There, this Shash, you might squeeze it. You are a lot to remove it making the waters mix. You can put back the pkak because you're not going to squeeze it because you don't want for the top and the bottom waters to be completely separated. Fakert, you want for the waters to be touching one the other. Another thing, if you have a drain, you can use garments, a material to plug a drain. If the kavana is, if the only reason is because you don't want the waters to overflow and to really soil garments, which means you don't need to plug it up completely. You just don't want the waters to be flowing out strong. So you're not going to stick it in tight. Then you can use it. But if you don't want any of the waters to be lost, you want to gather all the waters. You don't want any of the waters to leave A. For all the waters to go to be reserved, to get to go to the reservoir and through channel B, then you're going to stick it in tight. Oh. Allah you may not, we're speaking about now parts of laundering was the way they would fold things up. You may not fix the sleeves, right? Adjusting them or to fold them. Folding shvarim, shvarim, shvarim means you're folding the garment in a way you don't want that creases. So you're beautifully folding it on Shabbos. You may not do it. Because uh, we'll see, you know, it looks like a, it, it looks like it looks like, or you might end up laundering. You cannot fold any garments. I think because it's because it's looks like. But if you don't have another clothes to put on on Shabbos morning, and you're taking it off Friday night, then yes, boy that you can fold it in a proper way because you don't want to wear wrinkled garments on Shabbos. Kadesh, Kadesh, you still have a Shabbos. You want to appear very nice. But Vuhu, Vuhu goes back. When is there Isra on folding properly? Only if you are folding a brand new white garment. Shaharehu mismayech mislach leich 
because it becomes wrinkled and soiled immediately. And therefore what? And therefore you're doing something kedarach the launderers do. But if it's a garment that even if you won't properly fold it up that great, regardless, it's going to look the same, then don't be so cautious not to do it. Another thing, when you are folding up a garment, when you are allowed, why? Because if two people are using the garment, then they're going to stretch it out prior to folding. Stretching out any garment then prior to folding it would remove the wrinkles, which is also connected. So even when you're allowed to do it, it's never going to be mamish perfect. You're not going to, prior to folding it, completely make it flat. Coloring. She may not put rouge on her face because she is so evas. for sewing is Can you fill up an outer uh, the outer pillar case with a cotton cloth? You may not do that because normally when people would put cotton in inside a blanket, they would sew it up. You might end up sewing. However, if prior to Shabbos there was already cotton and then it fell out on Shabbos, you can put it back in. Since it's not brand new, it was already there. If your clothing got caught in thorns, right? We don't want to. So, in a, in, in, slowly. But Sina doesn't mean in private, it means you can remove it slowly. But take your time. In order for you not to rip your garments. And if you ripped your garments just to know, it's like a very big fence. You're not chayif klum because that was not your intention. Okay. You are allowed to wear new clothing, even though sometimes new clothing, you know, prior to wearing it, when you wear it the first time, you might tear it. Amazing how things used to be. Who, who, who says the pants fit you? Maybe you'll sit down on the pants once, the whole thing will split open. And then they're going to make Another thing. Points in a sag is a matlis. You are allowed to crack a knot. You are allowed to crack a knot on top of a, a matlis. Why would you do that? Because when you crack the knot open, you don't want the the, the pady to fall out to get dirty. The downside is is that you might tear the garment. That was not your kavana. In chayish and shema tikkada. Because even if you ripped it, first of all, we passing like Rabbi Shimon. It's not psikadeshah. Furthermore, ripping is only problematic if you need that shear. Here you don't need that that measurement. Hatoykeya halacha chafein. Knocking two things together is chayiv mishum boyna, and therefore call had the losses of the like karka. If the door is connected to the ground, not only may you not remove it, but if it was removed, you may not put it back in, even though there are hinges with sina soken because kaseder you might properly put it back in with nails. Avol, however, doors of a shaded table omigo or other doors of kalim noitlin v'loy machzidim, you are allowed to remove it, even though you're not allowed to put it back. Furthermore, the im nishmat Most things had two hinges, and if the, the the if the top hinge is still in there, the only hinge that got removed was the bottom one. Then you can put it back in its place, because the words in Gemara is noyach laharzira. The bottom hinge was not that important. It's not like building. The top hinge was the icker one. Uba mikdash even. Even if the whole thing came off, because all of this is by Midrabanan, but if the top hinge fell off, also Machzida, even on the base of Mikdash, because that's already Gzeda, you might end up putting in a pin or putting in a nail, and that's going to be You may not braid hair. Imagine braiding hair is boina, nor parting the hair, because if you're going to part the hair, you might end up braiding the hair. If they should need a kabaina. How great is that? The Don't call me here. Huh? Don't call me here. Uh, that's another issue. Don't call me here. There's two things. There's braiding, parting, combing. Combing is also because goises. And that's why, yeah, theoretically, if there's no psikadesha, that's not your kavana. It's the, bro- the brush is soft. You could. The brush is hard. You can't. That's something else. We're speaking about building your hair. The Ein Machzir in the Nerish of Chulius. If you have a, a assembled keli, a keli that's made to be put together, taken apart. So don't. Put back together the menorah that's made out of little shtikalach, or a chair hamafutza, also a chair that's made out of different parts. Because it looks like boinam, but these things are meant to be taken apart and put together. So if you did so, you're going to be potter because of midoyd aisa ain't being in bekelim, ain't stira bekelim. Okay, that just goes back to what we learned above in the beginning of in halacha chafei that even by migdash, you see, here is a, an exception of ain't shuz by migdash. And if the tzir ha'elyon was removed from the box, you can't put back the top hinge. 
even though Midoraisa ain't being in the Kalem, still sometimes in the base of Migdash, you see already today, you just, you sort of, if, now, if it was loose, you can put it back properly. Because it's already together. If, when a baby is born, you are allowed to straighten out his limbs by an infant. But if he's just a minor and not an infant, straightening out the vertebrae is not allowed to be done because Shanita Kabayna. Chiropractor, there's the an issue of Rafua, and here we're learning about an issue of Baina. Allah of Zion. I would say most chiropractors, they're Makalko. <laughs> so maybe it's not a problem. At least not Midorai. So we're making a permanent tent. The Chiddush of a tent is, is that even though Baina doesn't only mean brick and mortar, Baina means something permanent. So if you're using any other material to make an oil, which is a covering, if it's Kavua, Chayet. Now, you can't even make an oil aray, at least not lechat chilo, nor can you take apart an oil aray, shema yasa, or yisrael kavua. But if you made an oil aray, or if you took apart an oil aray, then you violated, you violated the rabbinic law. You're not, you're not high of a punishment from the Torah. Now, if you already have an oil, as we'll see soon defined by, there's already a tafach of width, mutter lo haisa vayilani v'shavs. Pizza. Talu shayi perus al gabi amudim. If you have a talus that's spread over beams, ayalak salim. Even, but it was rolled up from before Shabbos. As long as there was, there was a roof. That means there was a horizontal. That's wide. Roich of an oirach of a tefa that's spread out. There's already a god. There's already an oil. You putting down. You're only adding to the oil. Even though you're making a big oil, because that's called you being moisiv on oil aray. It's not even prohibited in the rabban. Many examples. So they would have these nettings on beds. Let's go to that. So ain't oil in a sakila because she didn't assist that oil aray. If nothing of the netting was put on trial. So one can argue, how can you open up a folding chair? See, we learned before you can't build a chair. But what happens to our chairs or our tables? You're not building anything. You're just, you're just opening them up. You can put down a chair. Are you making an oil aray? Your kavon is not to make the oil. 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 Call oil that's meshupa. Meaning it's so inclined, she ain't the tapach, neither is there a horizontal of a tapach, or even if there's no horizontal, but if within the first three tfachim, going melmaila lamata, if you have two sides, and within three tfachim, there's a tefach of space in between, now, if there's a rechav tefach, you can also say there's some sort of oil. But if that won't happen, so first, by default, that's called an oil aray. So it's even building the whole thing. It's taka also because of oil ara. You're not, you're not adding, but it's not a called an oil kavua. Even if you're leaving it there. That's called an oil ara. If you have a talus that's spread over a beam, and this talus has strings attached to the side, and it was made for you to pull it down. You are allowed to spread out the talus. Why? Because there was already a tafak on the top. I'm sorry, because here there isn't even a tafak on the top, right? And it was already there. The paroiches, the paroiches, you can even, the paroiches is hung up. You can open up a paroiches and close a paroiches because there's no tafak on the top. It's not a problem at all. Kilas chasanem, it's called a bridal canopy. Bridal canopy, if it doesn't have a tafak on the top. So you have two posts instead of four. The aim of tafach. Since it was made dafka for this purpose, here there's even a bigger kiddush, even if it was not on it at all, but you can put it up and take it down. That's even more than the curtain that was already hanging a little bit. Here you can put up the whole canopy again. The point is, with one, with one caveat. And there's two ways of learning. The Ramam will follow its special late. That if, if when you take down this canopy, there's no gag tefach, you're rolling it down. If the, if the sides will go underneath the bed of a tefach, then we will view the area under the bed as if you created walls for that area under the bed, and that will be a problem. A board that people would use to cover a window. This is mamish the end of the Sefta Shabbos. At home, achloikas doesn't have to be attached or not attached. So you take it in, you, you put it in, you take it out. And what's the issue? Is it called you're adding to an oil aray? If you're only adding to an oil aray, it's not a problem. So the Ramam says, if it was designated for this, even though it was not pre-bound, and it's not, it's not even hanging with a rope. 
you are allowed to plug the window up with it. Allah Alamad Aleph, Kaiba, what about a hat? Why isn't the hat an oil aray? So we're talking about, you know, there were certain type of hats that are not real begadim, that had big protrusions in the room, will be a problem. So Kaiba, Shoois and Alaraish, even though the Yeshle Sapa Mukhefes, there is a certain type of brim. The brim is there to provide shape. She oysa let's say, come on, oil alof shay, mutal alof shay. Because it, it, it's not called an oil on it. You're wearing a hat, even though that begot has a part that was made for shape. However, that's because you're wearing a hat that's already with a brim. Can I make a hoodie out of my clothing that was not made with a hood? Can I extend my clothing? Now we'll see. If I'm taking shlepping from my garment that's near my head, or can I get the come oil? If whatever I'm wearing on me that's now being extended is hard, it's like a roof, it's awesome. You're wearing very stiff garments, you cannot use it by extending it outwards. If a person is hanging a curtain, you have to be careful that while you're hanging it up, you should not make it into an oil. But pshat, in other words, when when um, when you're hanging up the curtain, why is it not an oil, guys? Because there's no oil tapach. But if I'm hanging it out, if I'm going to carry it even only for a moment horizontally, don't do that. And therefore, how do you guarantee you won't do it? Make sure two people are putting it up. Latika chamaisa parechis gadayla. Dafka used two people because one guy won't be able to manipulate it that well, and he might have to get it into that position while he's hanging it up. And if there's a certain type of canopy that has a roof, a person cannot say, if it already has a gag, I'm going to hang it in a way where I'm not going to allow the roof to stay. You can stretch it out. Don't do that, because prior to you stretching it out, if it already has that horizontal of a tafak, it's going to be there for a moment. While you're putting it up, prior to you stretching it out, if it already has that pre gag roof, that you're going to have an oil aray. Any bag that you're using to cover a jug, don't cover the entire jug. Can you imagine? Don't use a bag. We're not speaking about a hard cover. Don't use a baguette to spread it out over a barrel, aside of what we learned before, that if the baguette is not designated to put on top of a barrel, then we are afraid that if the baguette will be filled with liquid, you might squeeze it out. There's another issue. You're making an oil. oil. Wow. But leave it open a little bit or, or don't cover it completely. Maybe mix us only means minority. That's not a problem. Another thing. Hamisaneh, a filter. If you're filtering something with kifito mitzvahs that we said before, you can use for something that was already pre uh, pre uh, filtered. Lo yagbiya karkois akfifa min akeli tefach. Don't wow. Don't lift it up a tefach because if you lift it up a tefach, then it's going to become like an oil aray. Wow. Chaver today's final pedik pedik chav gimel. Now we're going into real short parakmas. Only twenty eight halachas. And this is uh, and this is again all of the three parakim today. Not always, not told us, in the category of shvus, whether a shvus is a doiraisa that the Chachamim explained, whether a shvus is a pure darabanan, and all of these shvus are in one of the two categories, either because it's doimah or because hamivim l'day malacha. Let's go. Halacha al. Ho'oysa neck of kolshu. Any hole that was made with the intent of you being able through that hole to both be machnes and to be moitzi, like a hole that's made in a chicken coop. What's lahachnes? You want the light to go in. What's lahoisi? The terrible odors, the vapors. That is chayv mishumak in And therefore, the chachamim made exeda on any hole, even if it's only a one-directional hole, right? Even if it's only lahoisi or only lahachnes, you may not make such a perforation. Shema yovel asis tekev shayim and all. Now, guys, I know we learn mapas morsa, but guys, mapas morsa. Another rule: mapas morsa lahoisi the 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 the, the pas. That's because since there's sad. When there's tzad, they allow you to do certain things. They lachatchila, but generally making a hole only lachachnas or lahoitzi is asam midrabanan. And now we're going to have examples for that. But pnei zeh ein noitvim bechavias nekev chadash. You can't make a brand new hole in a barrel. The ein moisifim boy or make it uh, bigger because that's isur midrabanan. Avol if there was an old hole that you can you know reopen. For who shaloyan nakev lamatim and ashamarim? Which hole is considered reopening? Guys, I'm going to say by heart, if you have a barrel and you, if there was a hole made in the bottom of the barrel and you stopped it up, you stopped it up very strong 
because there's a lot of weight. So any hole that was under the liquid or under the shmarim, which means that when you plugged it up, you really plugged it up, reopening it is called making a new hole. Because if you wouldn't have done it really properly, the pressure of the wine and the and the dregs would have would have would have broken the hole. Shim, but that hole that you can reopen cannot be a hole that was previously made underneath the line of the shmarim. Shim shmarim, which is really in the bottom of the barrel, what's top of the barrel is wine, bottom of the barrel is with the dregs. It's not about the dregs, it's about there's a lot of weight in the bottom of the barrel. Today's also the chaze, because it was plugged up strong. And it's considered like it was fixed. And now reopening it halachically is called opening it for the first time. Halacha base. When they would have casks, they would have a seal on the top. And when they would want to remove wine because of the issue of yain megula, even today, we don't leave wine open. They would never really open the cask. They would make, they would, they would, they would have a seal and they would, they, would, they would remove the seal. So we're saying that you are allowed to make a hole not in the cask, that's also awesome. in the seal, but only in the top, not on the side, which is how it's normally done. Because that's Kemesak and Kaylee. Another thing. Can you break a utensil to get food out? Let me tell you the pros and the cons. First of all, breaking, breaking. Kilkul is uh, not high dirt ice. Call him a kalkul and puturin, but puturin is a race of pot, that will also. But when you're mechalkul, in order to eat immediately, Mutter. That's the call. So you are allowed to break a chavius to eat from it a groigeris as long as your intent is not to break it in a way that what remains is a keli. Because then if you know it, it's going to be a keli, you got an issue. Or maybe Adam chavish al yani matas reshu besad lehinga orchen fe'en ha'choshesh she'en kavanasi el al-laharis l'nivus liboy. In other words, what happens? We said you can only be makalkal. Makalkalis should be awesome that Rabbanan. Why is it mutter? Because you want to uh, consume. So what happens if I have the big barrel of wine and there's only one guest? Really, it would have been enough for me to make a little hole in the, in the seal. I'm taking a sword and I'm opening up the whole cask. Now I'm making a keli. But uh, my kavana was not to make a keli. My kavana was just cut off the top. And, and we don't say that what? That, that's not, I don't need it. I don't need the whole barrel. I do need it. I want to show my guest that, that he can drink as much as he wants. So that's called the tzoyre hachila, the tzoyre oichel. For now, there's no issue with with mechalka. And again, my intention is not to cut off the cask on this height or on that height. I'm not looking for the height. I'm just looking to get to get it open. You you can do it. Allah give him. Yeah, Very good. Yes. Sometimes, according to some people. Allah give him. Let's start. I'm careful to say a word here because I don't know enough. Hashem shu asul leftoyach kol nekev. Just like mid and you can't open up a hole, even as, even if it's only one way direction. So therefore, also listam nekavachavis. Even bedavar sheena mismareach, something that you don't need to squeeze, and therefore you're never going to come to the issue of schita. Like you, you're going to use a toothpick, you're going to use a little pebble. You may not do that because mid and you can't make a hole. Mid and you can't plug up a hole. Abol imeniachsham oichel. But if I'm doing a harama, um, I'm putting food in the barrel. Happens to be that while the food is going in the barrel, it's getting stuck in the hole. That you can do. And then the Ramam says, There's a very simple rule, at least as a rule, there's exceptions. That whenever the Isra is only made the and then subterfuge, which is what you're doing over here, you're plugging the hole, but you're doing it with food. Haram is okay by Isra the Rabbanan. Malacha four. Anything that's the final. That's the that completes it completes this object. Chayv all of the shul makav the patish. As we learned in Pedik Yud, but pnei zeh hagoyed kol shul. If you scrape any utensil and masakim can be as low as masakim, you're chayev. Lefikach also la shmiya kol shul shul shabbos. Watch it. Fixing an instrument that means you have the whole keli was made already. You have a string instrument. The string broke. Fixing the string is makav the patish, right? Putting on the string. Bein bechleishim. Right, fixing a musical instrument since this is now what makes the keli functional. You hide without that string, maybe it's not right. If you play with it, maybe it's not okay. What about banging your finger on the ground or on a table or one finger against the other? As people do when they sing, 
Eso egis Latino, you go rattling a egos in front of a child that's you're making your mashmiya coil, or you're sachik, or you're if you're playing with the bell in order for him to be quiet, calls it a chayyotsa boy. All of this, a fila, all of this, according to the Ramam, is asur, gizeda, shema, yisakin, klei, shi. Wow. And therefore, Allah, hey, this is really a Mishnah. I know that we pass in like places, it's not like the Rambam, but the Rambam says, therefore, a misapkin, you may not beat a drum. And by the way, a drum doesn't only mean a drum, it means even the bima of the table. But merakin, you may not dance, which is why some people who don't follow Toysavis, they don't dance on Shabbos. You know, a lot of but loy metapchin, no, you can you metapchin is special to clap hands. The Shabbos, gizei the shemi is not English yet. The only hetter for clapping the hands according to shita is to clap in an unusual way. We don't paskin like this. And the Rebbe in the Rabbim, when the holy people around them, like Rabbi Chadikov of blessed memory, would clap on Shabbos like this, the Rebbe would always show him to clap straight. And as a chassid, when the Rebbe showed him that, he clapped straight. The next Shabbos, he was back to this. <laughs> it's amazing. Every week, the Rebbe would look at him and tell him how to clap his hands. And that's called a chassid. And that's a, that's a lesson for us. Halacha, of, oh, middle of hay. Another din. You cannot swim in water because you might end up building a raft. Now, that's only in a place where you need a raft if you get into trouble. What about a small pond of water? No one builds a raft in a small pond of water. So, barecha shem chassid. You're allowed to swim in it. You're not going to build a raft. If there is something that makes this look different than a river, different than the ocean, and that is there's a rim around it. There's an edge jutting up. We paskin like this. However, in other words, we paskin, even though our minig is not to go swimming in a swimming pool. I'm not saying we, it's a minig, but I'll pee din for people to say, ah, swimming in a pool like this. If there was something protruding, it's not the infinity pool. It's not water that easily splashes out, which makes it similar to a body of natural water. Right? Since there is a safa, it doesn't allow the water to easily splash out. It's not enough that it's small. It's not enough of a heck. It has to be something different than a natural body of water. And then the Ramam says you can swim in it on Shabbos. Allah above. You may not cut a reed because it assembles making a keli. In other words, the, the, you know, the, you want to use a straw as a siphon, if that's the word. You, you can't make the size correct. You can't make the cut. Now, if it was already cut, it, it already can be used as this uh, keli of having water go from place A to place B. You are allowed to take something that was already pre-cut and insert it in the barrel, and you're not afraid that you're going to make it even better because it wasn't completed before. We're not chayish to that. However, that's because, guys, you're taking something as it is and you're sticking it into a hole, you're making it into a spigot. What about taking a leaf that's already there and rolling the leaf to stick it into as a spigot? Here you're doing something. You're rolling it. That's already awesome. Because you are as if you're making a marzit, you're making a faucet. Again, before, you're not doing anything. The kana is already, it's a natural straw. You're just sticking it in. Here, you're rolling the leaf. Even though it's not a substantial activity, that rolling is kamas. You may not break a shard and rip paper which is something that people would do when they would fry fish. Certain fishes, they get burned very easy. So they would break a shard, they would have a nair, they would soak the nair in water, on the big chef tzemach, and then they would put this paper on the shard, then they would put the fish on top of the paper, then they would put it over the fire, then the fish would not get burned. So just breaking a shard, which is mekalka, right? Even with say the Or ripping a paper, it's kemesak and keli, because sometimes this is an act of tikkun. Allah zayin. What about a branch that's a vine branch that's tied up to a cup right if it's already tied up to the cup or the bucket then you can use it on chavez but if it's not kashura even if we learned above that number one it's a maisa head yet to tie up a, ba- a, a bucket we learned this together and the ramam says that what cash is shall kayama a proper rope no one would leave permanently a flimsy branch so there is no issue of kashit, but you may not do it for another reason. Not because you're violating kshira, because you, when you draw something out of water, the length of the vine is of significance. 
You want it to be the right. If it's way too big, you can cut off a part. You can, you can, you can cut off a piece. Cutting off a piece, what's the problem with that? You're doing it because you want to have a shorter rope. That means you're masakin keli. Gavaldik. You're not, you're not violating koireya, but you're violating masakin keli. Koireya is if you want the exact width and the length. Take gavaldik. And that will be us, or the other girsas. I don't know what girsas you have over here. The Rambam. Right there. Also, lochiv klei kesef be garta coin. Garta coin is a professional polish. You may not polish because that's malabin. And why is it malabin? Because that's the way professionals will polish the silverware. The nimsa can be second keli. What's wrong with polishing? You know, it's like makam apatish, right? Can be second keli. And very malachim b'shavus. Yeah, the Rambam, Rabbi Yaakov, definitely interchanges. These two words of goimer malachtoi and makabapatish. Aval, but if you're using a non-professional type of uh, polish, which is sand or nesed, that's allowed. Other utensils may be polished with any substance because they don't need to be polished. You may not wash out plates or be elfasen or pans. Why not? Because that's kemesake. Now, uh, one second, guys. We're learning a new din over here. That's not from Masak and Kaylee, just to know clear. This is, you're not allowed to do something on Shabbos to be Masak in it for the weekday. That's why you have to be careful when you say Tikkun Kaylee. That's not Tikkun Kaylee of Makam Apatish. You're cleaning out a utensil. That's what the Rambam is talking about over here. It's interesting that he writes of a chain. Polishing, polishing silver with professional polish is not because you're preparing it for the weekday. That's the Tikkun Kaylee Goyim and Malachta, Makam Apatish. Here we're speaking about don't do something now for the weekday. El imkain, you're washing it out to eat it today. Um, I, I So you see, the, the Ramam uses the words tikkun keli mamish in two different contexts altogether. Now, when do you have to make sure you're going to use the plates today for you to be allowed to wash it out plates? Because if I'm not planning to have a meal, I will not use the plate today. You can put it in the sink. It shouldn't make your kitchen dirty, but don't wash it out. But cups, you always drink. Even if you don't think you're going to, you can wash it out because you're going to drink more today. Abu Kelisha Sia, like Kaisa's, or even Ketaymi's, different little jugs. Mutar Ladicha Bukhalais, because she ain't Kabbal the Shasia. Now, sometimes some place can write, if you know you're not going to drink, I'll give you a marshal. It's Shkia. You didn't wash your shallow shoes. You're not allowed to drink until you make Abdullah. Then, no, that, no, the point that's called Tikkun Kaili. That's called Tikkun Lutsayda Khail. Good. The aim, what's the answer? Tikkun Lutsayda Khail also means. Don't make your beds on Shabbos from what's a Shabbos. But you are allowed to make your bed Friday night when you wake up when you're Friday night, when you wake up Shabbos morning, if you're going to take a Shabbos shlof, you, know, you, you are allowed to prepare it only for Shabbos itself. That's not called Tikkun Lutzayda Chal. Halacha Ches. Wow, we have another a nice amount of 20 halachas to go Lachayim Tzvika. It's good we started at 5 and not 5.20. Guys, we need joy over here. Asur lahat will kalim to me Shabbos. When you are fixing something but not discernible to the eye, that means you're fixing it because you are removing a biblical, non-tangible problem. Something is tummy and you're traveling it. You're not allowed to do it because you're Masak and Kaylee. What about a person? I will Adam, Tame, Muter, Lit, Muter, Lit. Well, I, you're Masak and. Look at the Ramam's logic. Why? Kasha, the answer is because since people are allowed to go into a body of water, again, we're not following our meaning that we don't do that in a bath. I'm not talking about showering, which is okay. Talking about taking a cold bath. We don't do a cold bath on Shabbos because of a minute. They took a cold bath. And I'm took cold baths. So since it looks like you're taking, you're going into water to cool off, which is something that's allowed, even though you're really going into it to toivo, we're not speaking about hot nicholas here at all, then you're allowed to do it. However, you may not have the waters of the of the Afara Pada sprinkled on you on Shabbos, right? Nor nor to be matbal kalim on Shabbos. You don't have to cool off kalim on Shabbos. And if you did it, if you did it, then maze it. Imagine you may not use it until Matzah Shabbos. Next, traveling Kalim is, uh, you know, the din of um, by Goyim, Tumas Akun. Now, there's one food and liquid item, the only one that if it becomes Tomei, you can travel and that's water. If you're doing what we call Hajjaka Zriya, was if I have water that's Tomei and it's clean water, and I don't have other clean water, I need to drink, so, and it's Tomei, and I don't want to drink Tomei water, and if you drink tummy a certain amount, you become a shani. I'm a kain. I want to be able to eat truma. Let's say. So what you do is you, you put the water down in the mikvah. The moment the moment the waters of the mikvah touches the waters, which is all the way on top of the keli, it's very little mixture. You bring it back up. 
Hashraka Zriya, that's the way that you are allowed to do. Another issue. If the waters are tumming, you put it into a keli, what's the din with Rabbanan? White waters will make the keli a tchila. The waters are a tchila. It's going to make a... And I don't... I don't what's the problem if the keli becomes tummy? You're taking it into the mikvah. You can't be metayed keli on Shabbos. So how do you have a chlal toivel waters when, the, when you're toiveling the keli? You use a keli that's not mekabal tumah, like kli avonim. And then, as long as you put it down in the water, that all of the waters of the sites touches it, then you have to You may not remove trumusumaisis because neither can mesak and dovish loyam is sukkah. Halacha 10. We're going to come back to that soon. Ma'abe processing leather is ma'abas malachisu. That was very good. And similarly, ma'abas malachisu. Softening a hide with oil. Kederach shu abdonim oisim. You're violating a ma'abe. Even though you're using shemen. Now we learned before you can put on oil, but hold on. If I'm wearing brand new leather shoes and I'm going to put oil on my shoe, when my shoe is in the shoe, when my foot is in the shoe, if I'm oiling my foot, I'm oiling the brand new leather shoe. That's ma'abe. But I can put oil first on my foot and then I can put on my shoe or then I can put on my sandal, even though they're new. Furthermore, I can put ointment, I can put oil, not ointment, oil on all of my body, and I can roll on this type of kadavla, this type of leather utensil, even though when I roll on it, I'm getting some of the oil on the kadavla. But the bottom bottom that I'm allowed to do it is only if I'm putting on a little bit of oil. So it's making the shoes moist, but it's not making it wet. Right? However, you know, I'm making it, I'm making it, I'm making it slightly slippery. That's when it is okay. That when me rolling on the kadavla or me putting my foot down in the shoe, it's mamash, making it soft. That's awesome because I'm doing ma'abi. All of the Isra is only if you're wearing brand new shoes, but all, all old leather shoes, they don't need to be uh, ma'abi. They don't need to be uh, mo- uh, made it wet with oil and therefore it's muted. Even when your foot is in the shoe, you can put oil. Rubbing ointment. Because you're moichet the oil, you are softening the oil. Now, does it mean you're softening your skin or it means you're softening the ointment, but you're building the moreh? But take a chain, so the neck of the shaiva. You cannot plug a hole with wax. Shema yi moreya. Wow. Oh, you're going to make the wax. You're going you're gonna to make the wax completely liquidy. The feel of bishuman, which is already not as thick as wax, also may not be used to be so the neck of the bishum shaiva. Guys, we're not speaking about, we learned in the previous chapter. Don't confuse that with that. You have a keli filled with food. We're not talking about that. Okay, halacha yud beis koytes mavis malacha is writing koysev. Look how many things are also because of koysev. Lefikach asur lik chayl bapuch bechayyitzavay. So we learned before that a woman cannot put on rouge. Why soyveya? What about putting this red, this uh, blue eye makeup? Putting on eye makeup, it was done. It was a liner. That's writing. And if you remember when we learned the hilchas ksiva, we learned about making designs. She, she cannot put this, this liner around her eye. Why can't you put on lipstick? Either it's Tzaviya or that other lipstick that you make, they, they line it. Any, it's like it's a pen. And now, now look, at, look how far we take this Gazeta Shema Yichlet. You cannot lend money. You cannot borrow money. You know why? Because you might document that. The chain also liquid will You can't buy and sell. You cannot rent. Whichever, whether you're the renter or the rentee, Shema Yichtoiv, Lo Yiskaradam Pa'alam Shabbos. You cannot hire workers. You cannot tell your friend to hire workers. You know what you could do? You can lend and borrow an item. That's allowed because since the same item will be returned, you know your item. It's the least problematic. You're not going to write. You don't need to write it. Shoy Lo Lemachaveni Kadi Yanim Kadi Shema. You are allowed to borrow. Bavachol Ayyem and Halveni. Don't say the words halveni. You know, it's anything that's done for a very short amount of time. Even though, guys, over here, I'm borrowing the wine. I'm not going to return this wine. <coughs> I don't use the word halveni. People are not going to write it down. Halacha you give Whether you're making a verbal sale or you're making a sale by giving something over. All of the shamayichtoif. Now, there's another issue of the daber dover. The Ramam is not speaking about it over here. We're speaking about shamayichtoif. Whether whether you're using a uh, a weight, whether you're not using the weight. We're going to learn Yantav later. Now we're learning Yantav later. 
Ain done on the Shabbos. You cannot adjudicate a case on Shabbos because whenever a Gintoyer finishes the din, they write it down. Below Cholzin, you can't do a, you, the Basin cannot officiate Chalitza, they cannot officiate an act of Yimum. You cannot do the Hareat Nikodeshously. The people that got married before Shabbos, out of Shabbos, they would do it right before Shabbos. The Su'udah would be on Shabbos, but the act of Kedushan was done that of Shabbos. Even though, what, what are you writing? You might write down the Shtar of Kedushan, you might write down the Ksuba. Another thing, the Ein Magdishin Boi Marichim Alei Machlimim, consecrating all different types of consecrations may not be done because since it's like Mecca Chomimkar, which means Shema Yichtoiv, my friends. Even though Ami Rossi Ligavoya, Kimisi Rossi Lahedit, that's that's the Kenyan, you still might write it down. Another thing, the Ein Magdishin and Trumus of you cannot separate Trumus of Mises. Why? Because it's like being Magdashit. What's the bomb question? Now, the Rambam writes himself, it's like you're Masak and Kaili. Didn't the Rambam already write, you can't do it because you're Masak and on Shabbos? So let me tell you how people answer it. That Trumas Chutzla Aritz, you are allowed to eat it and then be Mafresh it. Trumas Chutzla Aritz, I'm really allowed to eat it as long as I make sure that I'm going to let the end for the hafrash. So here, don't tell me that being mafrashit is misak in it, because I could have eaten it without being mafrashit. It's only true of Still don't do it. That's the way that Ramam has to write it. Because the act of separating true of is, is like, it's like an act of being magdashit to God. The aim of the every tenth animal, because you might smear the animal with red ink on Shabbos, which is what's normally done. How Magdish Adam Pisrib Shabbos, there are exceptions. You can be Magdish an animal for your Korban Pesach on Shabbos because you have to do it now. Likewise, the Korban Chagiga Yontif, Shizu Mitzvah Hayoim. The only Yisr is Midrabana, and here you have to do the Mitzvah. You cannot make me hot as Allah says, Bob. If you did separate Thomas from Isis, if you did it the then you can eat what you did. If you did it the you may not eat until Matzah Shabbos. We don't say that since you did something the Isur, it's not effective. It was effective. To God, same thing. Oh, here, what you did was did. It's hegdish and you give it to God. If you made a business transaction on Shabbos, even though you did it amazing, you shouldn't have done it. It's effective. The backing, the party that wants to back out cannot say, well, it was done on Shabbos. It's effective. Now, the Mai is only Suffolk, whether it's Mu'osir or not. And you can do it by Nashmashas. Why? Shuki doubled out. Aleph, maybe it was Mu'osir. Number two, maybe Ben is still the wheat day. But you cannot be Ma'asar Vaday Ben Ashmashes because that's only one suffix. The Imloy Eru, also, if you did not make an Eru, no, I, I think I skipped the whole page. I skipped the whole page. Allah Tazayin, everyone is going to learn today's Rambam, or at least a little part of it. We're almost there. Me, Shekar Hashem, Lutrum, Amais, and Shoulder, Me, Shekar Hashem, Lutrum, Amais, and Shoulder, My guys, just to know that normally when you separate it, Trum, Amais, you would actually separate it and give it to the recipient. That's the Halach Yelik. But when a person had the Mai, and the din of the Mai is, we're going to learn more details later, even though you have to separate some of the Trumas or Maises, you don't even have to give all of it away. You separate the Trumas, the, the Maiser, you don't even have to give it to the lady because that you say for that, but then you have to separate the Truma of the Truma. Maiser and Maiser. Now, there, sometimes people just made the declaration. This is going to be the Truma of the Maiser. And sometimes people did not give it to the recipient. That's what happened. Or Maiser Ani, Avadai. Sometimes you didn't yet give it to the Ani. Don't give it to him on Shabbos. So you can argue you're not doing anything wrong. It was already designated. Don't give it to him. You do him You know why? It's called Ket Mesak and Kaili. But if you have a coin or an Ani that's eating by you, they can. They can come and eat from it because it was already designated for the client. It was already designated for the owner. You're not taking it to him. But there's another caveat. The caveat is when you invite a guest, it's like tricking a person. When you invite a guest, inviting a guest means that the guest is eating from your shulchan. Imagine if I have my house, my Ani, and I'm now the big knack and I'm going into shulchan and I'm inviting the Aniyim. That's fine. And I'm giving them the my Ani. You can do that, but they should know that they are eating my Ani. It's like a Geneva's Das. Or a coin, you're inviting the coin, but you're giving the you're giving food anyways you needed to give to a coin. Or let the honey know that that's what I'm feeding you 
is already my Sarani, he should know that you're not the big benevolent balabas that you might appear to be. Halacha yud zayin, asr lahafiz ulasachev mikor shabbos. You may not draw lots or 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 other types of uh, throwing the dice on shabbos because it looks like mecca chomemka. Now, umayfis other men bond of them benebei so yal mana gedoy lo keneged bond mana keneged bond ktanam. It was common that if in your house you have different portions of meat. And you have to decide which kid is getting which portion. So some people, what they did was they drew, they drew, they threw the dice. That you can do on Shabbos. Why? Because it's not that important. Because the kids and the whole family are not that mocked with who gets the big one. It's more just to entertain everyone. No, it's making. It's not muksa. No, no. The question. Well, this is the question today about many uh, toys, games that they have dice on it. No, it's, the, 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 theoretically, according to the Ramam, if you're not mocked. You can do it. If you're mock, but you can't do it. Halacha yud ches, asr lachash b'cheshbein eshul tzarech lahem. You may not calculate cheshbein on Shabbos. Bein sh'ava, bein sh'asad liyoyz. Whether it's something that happened, or whether what you need to do, why can't you make these calculations, which is not mitzvah related, because you might write it down. However, lefikah cheshbein eshe'en bem tzarech, if there's no tzarech, you start making calculations, you're allowed to do it, but it's a chaval al-azman. Like, for example, Ketzad. A person wants to know, kama soh ha'yolana v'shana p'lenis. How much, um, what was our GDP of uh, three years ago? You stop wasting time. How much did we spend on our son's wedding? Now, that's Sicha Betela. There's no Tzoyrach. You're not going to write it down. And I'm a chashev. You're not violating Hashem HaYichtoiv. But don't do this. He's really saying, don't waste your time. Guys, I'm happy you're all over here. You're not allowed to read any... Shitrei hedius b'Shabbos. The only thing you can read on Shabbos is Tanakh and Torah Shaval Peh. That's it, and not even uh, not even all of Tanakh, as we'll see. You can read anything else. And what's the issue? The issue is, is when you read a document and you don't like what it says. You know what they did then? They erased it. So the Zayda. In other words, aside of what we're going to learn in the next chapter, the Daber Daber, the Chefzecha, he's going to write something else. There's a Shema Yichtev, Shema Yimchay. Don't read any document. Now, Umayna Adam es Orchesev es Paparesev Betev, Lemin Aksav. It's about reading. Imagine you have a menu or you have guests and you need to know how many portions for how many guests. So some of these things were written down. Don't even read that. Because if you'll end up reading the notes that you made to serve what portion to whom, you might end up reading the Shitrei and Yoytes, which includes books of... Uh, uh, you're, reading a, you're reading a science book. The Ramam says you may not do it on Shabbos. But if the names of the people were not written, normally written, uh, in, a, in an erasable fashion, but they were engraved, because you won't confuse it with the document. If you're looking at an art, you're going to look at a painting, and under the painting they wrote, the big Chacham that made the painting, you can't read those pictures. You can't read, you can't read those writings. That don't read anything other than Torah Shabbos and Torah Shabbos Pen. And I'm on the edge. Af likrei spaksunu b'Shabbos b'Shabbos beis Hamed Roshos. It was common that every Shabbos they would gather the people to learn in the afternoon. Now, guys, the shir that the rabbi gave was never going to be as attractive as reading Sun, as reading Mishlei. Whoever did not read Mishlei, you'll pick it up. You won't be able to put it down, even though it's part of Nach Suvin. Don't read that. Why don't read that? First of all, all of the mitzvahs are in the Torah. People are going to read the Ksuvim, they might not join the share. We want two people to learn together. Wow. If the fire breaks out on Shabbos, even though there's an Eidu, there's no issue of carrying. Sometimes we said, if you're carrying a wallet, we said, and if you won't give a heter, then he's going to end up carrying me. Here, Chazal said the opposite. If a fire is burning, in the case where there's no pikuach nefesh, I may not put out the fire. If I would be allowed to go and save my articles in the house, if I'm allowed, I'm going to end up putting out the fire. Chachamim says there's a limit to how much you can save. Adam bol Chazal used that sometimes to opposite directions. And therefore, there's a limit. Well, el that you need for that Shabbos. Even less that we learned before. By the barrel that broke, we said you can save from us and Shalosh Here, if it broke Shabbos afternoon, you're only going to have Shalosh You can only save fruit for Shalosh Or, and you can save the kalim that you need for that Shabbos. Only the garments that you can wear on that Shabbos. 
Because once you can't save more, you'll give up on it and you're not going to come to put out the fire. The Imloy Edu. Now, if you didn't make an Edu, so taking out from your house to the Chatzar is in violation. Now, when you do have an Edu, then you can save food for three sodas. Because that's what for you, for people, the food that you need for the animals. If the fire broke out Shabbos morning, you already ate the Friday night meal. You can only say Muslim stay so this. And if the fire broke out in the afternoon, you only have the third meal, then only Matzil and Muslim Suda Achas. Halacha Chav Beis. Ramet Varmamurim, when do you have this restriction? If you're trying to save by using many boxes. But in other words, even if you're using the same one, you're taking the Kaili, you're taking it outside, you're pouring it on the chutz, you're taking it back in. What happens if you have one box? Now, this box can contain food for 20 meals, but it's only one box, only one time. That you can do. But if it's one keli, one act of hoitzah, then even if you fit in that box more than three meals, you're allowed to do it. Keitzah. Matzal sal maliki kareis. Filled with bread. Even though they're, avopishiyesh boy, in the breads, you can have 20 meals. Many sodas. Or an eagle shall develop, or in a whole barrel of wine. It's one keli, one time. If you don't have a keli, but you're using a big talus, you're opening it up, you're filling it up with stuff. No matter how much fits, one time you're allowed to do. The kibitz bakal shiyah halo mutter. Furthermore, a person is allowed to tell us, chavedim, come and take for yourselves. And everyone can save food for what they need. Or everyone can bring one keli, even if their one keli can fill up much more than what they need. But however, who does it belong to? It belongs to the guy that saved it. It belongs to the other person. If after Shabbos he doesn't want to keep it, he wants to give it back to the owners, then he can take it after he can actually pay him Now, what's the issue with Shara Mali? What did with Ramam? The Ramam that they spoke about Havla. When there's no Havla, you can't do Shah Shabbos. The Ramam says there's no Shah Shabbos issue because what really happened is he's not charging you for his work. If the fire is in your house and you took the max that you can take, everything else is hefkev. What I took really belongs to me. If I don't want to keep it and I'm ch- I'm charging you only for my hard work, really I'm charging you for the item. That's not schar shabbos. Ah, the eighth is schar shabbos because really no malacha was done. And 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 again, the ikir is is that the item belongs to the guy that took it out. So he's selling the item, even though he's not wording it that way. Halacha 25, if he took out pasnakia, and then he says, I don't want to have pasnakia, I want to have whole wheat. Whole wheat bread is inferior. But if he saved whole wheat, shalish, shalish, su'udas, then he can do, then he can, you know what? I don't want whole wheat. I'm going back into my house to save pasnakia. You can always upgrade. Umatzal liyam akipurim, you can save on Yom Kippur. If Yom Kippur falls on Friday, that which you need for Shabbos, but... None of, the thing, none, of, none of these things happen now with the calendar, but when it happened, but if Yom Kippur is on Sunday, then in the Shabbos, guys, don't get nervous. Yom Kippur, no one eats on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur means you can't save food that you're going to need for after the fast. The answer of you cannot save on Shabbos for Yom Kippur, but Shabbos, or Shabbos, or Shabbos, or Shabbos, or what can you take to wear? Lebish, Koshu, Yachal, Lebish, Koshu, Yachal, Atta, even might see. You can put on ma- many layers of clothing. Not only your suit, you can put on put on at one time as many suits as you could. And now, same thing. Then you tell the other people, I cannot save the rest. In five minutes, this room is burnt down. Come and take it for you. And everyone can also go in there and wear as much as they can wear and take it out. And it belongs from them like the food. That's in that yard. And there's a fire. You can save it. And here, even more, even if there's no Eidu. Because you're saving Tanakh from being burnt. As long as it should be physically enclosed with the, with the three mechitzas and a lachi. You understand? And the issue was only that we didn't make a shituf that we didn't learn about yet. That overrides and you can save it because you're saving Tanakh. What is holy? Only Ksavashuris that was written by Lashon HaKadosh. If you had scripture written in another language or written in another alphabet, even if there is an Eidu, it's not that holy. And during the weekdays, you're not allowed to read in such a scripture. We don't know who wrote it, right? We don't know who wrote it. So then you, you have to put it in a place where it's going to get, where it's going to decompose. If you had Tanakh, but it was written in a ink, 
that's uh, not the, the yoy or in red ink, so you would argue it's not that holy. You're not, you cannot read from it in the, in the, in the, in the Beis HaMedrash. You, you're not yoy to the mitzvah of reading, but since it's written in keep in the holy tongue and in the script called Ksav Ashuri, then you have to save it. Matzil and now, what about Hagilion Shol Svarim Shol Ma'elamata? If you have blank pictures of parchment, now, guys, obviously the parchment that's in the Sefer Torah, that if it's attached, it's part of it. But someone cut it out from before Shabbos, so it's detached already. Shabbat Parshal La Parshal Nadaf Ladaf, which is a Sefer, which is a Sefer, even though it's already cut off, and that since it's already cut off, you would argue it has kedusha. You can't since it's cut off; it doesn't have that amount of kedusha. Habrachas, which is what we call today a siddur. So they had brachas written on papers or a kameya, even though they're God's holy names, and on it is written Mayana Shaltoida and Matzil and Pneyaznik. Well, guys, the final halacha today is the longest Shirambam ever. Halacha Chavcha Sefer Toida that is very uh, used out. But if you can gather from the whole Sefer Toida 85 letters, but every letter has to be in a word that's complete. And that includes the letters in the title that are already written in Aramaic, like the words Yigar Sohadusa by Yaakov Abin. Then you can still save it. But if you have an entire Pasha, which means an entire book, by Hebrew Asaya Arun has 85 ICS. If that by Hebrew Asaya Arun was, some of that was erased. Some of that was erased. But since you have God's holy name written in it, then you can save it from the fire. Now, How did he come up with 85? Go count it. Uh, or Matzilit, uh, no, you were, even though by Yehibin Asoya Ha'ad and some of it was erased, since it's a whole parsha and there's God's name, you can save it. Um, once you can save a Sefer Torah, you can save it in the case. Same thing with Tefillin, you can save Tefillin, you can save it in the bag, even though there are money in the bag, because the monies are buffed to the tick, and therefore you are allowed to be Matzilit, even if there's no Eidu, no Shitu, Mazel Ah, thank you, everybody. Thank you.